Evening, everyone. This is the Enfield Town Council. Now, okay, we got okay, we're good. All right. This is a regular meeting, the Enfield Town Council, Monday, August 2nd, 20, 2021. It is 6 15. Uh, proposed amendments to the solid waste and recycling ordinance. I will read the I will read the ground rules. Um, roll call, please, before I actually read the ground rules. Sheila, roll call. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. Councillor Crisati. Absent. <clears throat> Councillor He's Hemler. on a family Here. vacation. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mangini. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Councillor Riley. Here. Councillor Safraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. Ten members present, one absent. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, the following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. Town of Enfield legal, legal notice. The, town, the Enfield Town Council does hereby schedule a public hearing to be held on August 2nd, 2021 at 6.15 6, p.m. in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, in order to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed amendments to the Enfield Town Code Chapter 7, Section 7-1 through, excuse me, 70-1 through 70-38, inclusive solid waste and recycling ordinance. Copies of the ordinance are obtained at the Office of the Town Clerk or viewed at www.enfield-connecticut.gov. <coughs> Dated as of July 16, 2021 by Sheila M. Bailey, our Town Clerk. The following ground rules of the public hearing. There, be sure no time, there, there is no time limit. We ask that each person please not take up too much time so everyone has the opportunity to speak. After each person who desires to have one chance, we shall permit individuals who desire a second chance. After those individuals who desire a second time, we shall permit individuals a third, fourth, etc. Please refrain from personalities. Again, this public hearing is specific to the ordinance. Uh, before we open up to anything from staff or just run over, open it right up. Okay, anyone who'd like to sp speak specifically on this ordinance? Just name and address for the record, please. Red light's on, so I should be good, right? Yep, it's on, you're good. Yep, Doug Finger, 44 Buchanan Road, uh, Refuge and Resource Management Crew Leader. And as everybody knows, President will go 1029 for the next two months, and I'm done after 1999 to now. Done. Uh, question I have is, is I, I think, maybe a comment first, is I think the, the DBW committee hit it right. I really do. I think that um, we need to put some kind of um, limit on what we're doing. Our trucks are old, and Mr. Bos Councilor Bosco will tell you they, they are old. That's why Zach and Councilor Mangini and stuff. I mean, all of you should know. We're trying to, we're trying to, we are, we are trying to get new ones, um, but it's tough. Um, our trucks are constantly in the fleet maintenance department getting worked on. We're using uh, a truck called 909 and 910. Uh, which was the first trucks I did uh, 15 years ago, I would think, <laughs> if not longer. Um, so we definitely need to do something because there is a lot of a lot of a lot of money being invested in this. Um, at $81.50, I think we're paying this year. 80, it goes up to 83 next year for a ton for MSW. It, we got to do something. It really does. Um, but the last thing I want to say is that I don't know if you have publicized, which I did not see, the price per tipper. We know we're the 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 uh, oh sorry the, the first price is zero for residents, from single family to multifamily to up to four residents. If I'm correct, Mr. Councilor Vasco, um, I think even up to five or more. I'm not sure. But after that, we don't. I didn't see where we're publicizing the cost of the second tipper, cost of the third tipper. And the main reason why I'm asking is because the ladies in the office um, at the highway department are going to be taking the calls for this. Not only you, but they're going to take the blunt of the calls from angry residents, wherever they are, um, about this, you know, new ordinance. They're scared. I mean, they, they don't know what to say. So I'm hoping that people at home who are watching this realize that they're just the ones that are taking the call takers. That's it. They're not the ones who made the policies, made the, made the, poli uh, made the for, uh, fees, none of that stuff. So please be kind to these people. They're not bad people. They're just doing their job. But we really should tell the public or we really should tell them and us what the fees are going to be for the second and third tipper. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak specifically on this on this ordinance? 
Anyone else like to speak specifically on this ordinance? Going once, going twice, a second time. Oh, good. Okay. Um, I declare the public hearing closed. So uh, again, uh, we have a. You know what, Mike? No, we. Oh, yeah, you have to wait till we debate the issue okay, on. That's fine. That's when I yeah, can talk. Yeah, you that's can talk. Fine. Sorry, you're right, but we have to wait. So next, unfortunately, well, again, you're going to get a little time back. Um, next public hearing is 6:45. The bulky waste transfer station fees, uh, folks. You can take a break. We'll see you in 20 uh, 20 minutes. <coughs> Declared this public hearing closed. We should have directed.
Um, 6.45, again, this is Monday, August 2nd, 2021, uh, the regular Enfield Town Council meeting. It is 6.45, proposed amendment to the bulky waste transfer station fees. I'll read the public notice. I'm sorry, uh, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Bosco? Here. Councillor Sakala? Here. Councillor Crisati is absent. Councillor Hemler? Here. Mayor Ludwig? Here. Councillor Mangini? Here. Councillor Muller? Here. Councillor Riley? Here. Councillor Safraza? Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Here. Councillor Ungeyer? Here. That's 10 members present, one absent. Thank you, Sheila. Um, the following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current Tuesday, July 20th, 2021, Town of Enfield Legal Notice. The Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, August 2nd, 2021, at 6.45 p.m. to allow interested citizens an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed amendment to the bulky waste transfer station fees. Copies of the amendment to the fees will be can be obtained in the office of the town clerk or viewed at www.enfield-connecticut.gov. Dated as of July 16th, 2021 by our Sheila M. Bailey, our town clerk. The following uh, ground rules for the public hearing. There is no time limit, but we ask each person not to take up too much time so everyone has an opportunity to speak. After each person who desires has one chance to speak, we shall permit individuals a second. After those individuals desire a second, we shall permit individuals to desire a third, fourth, etc. Please refrain from personalities. Again, this public hearing specifically on a bulky wake transfer station fees. Anyone in the audience like to speak on behalf of this public hearing? Welcome. Just name and address. Welcome. Hi, Tim Reak, 25 Conlon Drive. I'm also the scale operator at the transfer station. Um, as far as the fees, the tipping fees, for the permit, I really don't have a problem. We already pay more than what we were paying last year's, so we kind of had to catch up with that anyway. Uh, the permits, I'd rather not start selling the $20 permits in September if we can help it. I like to wait till we get the 2022 permits lined up and ready to go. So we're not selling a August permit at five bucks and a September permit at 20. Um, in the ordinance here, there's you took away the vehicle size limit. I, I kind of agree the 10,000 pound limit was kind of small. Pickup trucks are that big for trailers, and but we do need a, tr a vehicle size or we're going to have Asplund sized trucks coming in and dumping their chips at 20 bucks a year. And we spend a lot of money on disposal and grinding of the yard waste now. That's pretty much all I have for you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And I'd like to speak for the uh, council on this ordinance. Well, yeah, you're welcome. Come on up. His name and address, and you have the floor. Good evening, Doug Finger, 44 Buchanan Road. Um, I already told you who I am. I'm sure everybody knows who I am. So, like what Timmy says, I'm just going to follow up on that. The, you know. <laughs> Going through all this, it seems to me like we're really, sorry, we're really pushing a lot more on the residents. And this is my, my theory, okay, my opinion. Is right now we're only charging them five dollars for a yearly permit. Now we're gonna raise it to twenty. Okay. So at five dollars a permit, and this is and the information I'm getting for permits is from December first, two thousand twenty to present. Last week, I should say, not now, last week. All right. So we had 3,100 permits at five bucks. Give us $15,500. You raise it to 20, again, just using the same number of math for the 3,100 permits. We are now going to $62,000. Granted, the transfer station, and I'm sure everybody up there would agree, is not a money-making situation. But if you, I'm gonna finish the rest, but you have to understand where I'm gonna go with this, and you will understand when I'm finished. Okay, we're putting a lot on the taxpayers. One of the things we're missing is the uh, 260 pounds and under flat rate. That's $7 right now. If you go in there with any bulky items, if, you, if it's 260 pounds and under, it's a flat rate of $7. That is not on our page that, that is off the town manager's website. We're missing that. And if you're gonna keep it, that's fine. Uh, if you're going to raise it to $10 the flat rate, 
that's something that is, you know, could be doable, but you need to let the public know what's going on because it's not part of what, what we're seeing. Um, commercial, contractor, annual permits. We sold 30 vehicle permits at $120 a piece. It was $3,840 for a commercial permit. All right. You knock it down to 20 bucks at 30 vehicles, that's $600. So from 3840 to 600 bucks, you're losing money. And like Timmy said, he's okay with the increase. You know, he's our expert man back there. With the increase of the fees, but you're lowering the fees for commercial uh, people. You're raising the ta our residents from, from seven cents a pound to 10 cents a pound. But now we're taking the contractors from 12 cents a pound down to 10 cents a pound. All right, that's just, that's just something that I just think that you need to think about before you're voting on this, is that what are we really looking at? Um, again, fully understandable, we gotta do something. But we can't put it all on our residents. If you're gonna use a contractor to come in, why are we losing money on their permits? One thing, another thing that wasn't mentioned on this is that we do have, which is part of the ordinance, it is, where we have contractors that go to other businesses and you know condominiums and stuff they have to pay 120 dollars a year for a permit to just to you know come in the infield and do it that's not on here nobody's seeing that cost it's not a lot it's like five or six companies if i remember correctly maybe somebody can you know tell me better but we need to make sure that the people know you know this isn't a total layout of what the fees are, are being given to, to, to them. The monthly charge for the transfer station, as Tim was mentioned earlier, we went from $960 in our last contract for, uh, for 12 months per month, by the way, it's $960 per month, 12 months, we have eight boxes there to right now for 12 months is $2,400. That's $300 a box. That is by the contract that, uh, the bid process that we went through with the town and they bid into it. We gotta do something. We gotta start creating a little bit more income into that transfer station. Granted, I agree with the Councilor Bosco, it's never, never, ever gonna break even nor make a profit at this point of what's happening because Anywhere like Babylon's over in Suffield, which is where we bring our trash and recycling. If you as a private person or a contractor wanted to go there and bring some bulky items, it's $150 a ton. Now, if you come in with a half a ton, you're still going to get charged $150 for a minimum charge. We don't do that here. You know, if we want to stay competitive or if we want to try to make something more closer to being broken even, I think that's something we need to think about. We're not making what I consider the right choices of making sure that our residents don't take the total whack on what's happening there. Hauling fees are just phenomenal. You know, again, that's nothing that the town or you or anybody else can help with. It's what they charge. They are one of the only, only persons in this that, that put in bids. I'm sorry. No, so go right ahead. No. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I heard something. My apologies. Now, at 12 cents a pound, when we had 53 towns in that in that in that time period, we had 12,720 dollars. You knock it down to 10 cents a pound, it's only going to be 10,600. We're losing $12,000 out of that transfer station. And as much as I like to say is that the, the contractors do have rights, but they're making money off what they do at people's homes. They're not giving them a break on those poundages. They're not going to give them any break on anything. They're going to charge what their normal fee is. So we have to look at what are we doing really? Why are we lowering the cost of contractors to come with all this bulky material and then raise the residents who come in with their little cleanup? 
You know, it, it just to me, I think it just doesn't make any sense. If you're going to make it fair for one, you should make it fair for both. Um, that's one of the things. Now, my biggest thing is yard waste. I know a lot of people don't agree with this. The leaves and leaves and brush cutting last year, fiscal year 2021, cost us fifty-eight thousand dollars and fifty-eight thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. That's what it cost the town. There is not one penny that came back to help pay for that. Not one penny. This is money that we're paying for to get it done. And by our permit, and um, if I, like, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, we have a limit through our permit of 3,000 uh, cubic square yards of brush and yard waste that we can have legally through the state. We're paying, I'm pretty sure it was close to almost $3, if not more, per cubic yard. And I just think that we need to do something about that, even if it's a small fee, if it's a limit. You know, if you ever looked at your permits, and Timmy, correct me if I'm wrong, is that on the bottom we have like one through five. Remember years ago, we used to go, you used to go to transfer station, and John Markowski, God bless his soul, we hand you, the, hand you that card. He used to click it every time he came in. You got like 10 free trips, right, you think it was? I mean, brought in whatever you want, 10 free trips. There's nothing wrong with maybe going back to that type of scenario again. You know, but after that, you know, we, we need to start doing something. This yard waste is killing us. We had, last week we had 146 tons collected by your guys that work for the town on a Friday. 146 tons. I can't break that down in the cubic yards. I'm sorry, I'm not math, you know, that smart. I apologize for that. And by the way, this three dollars and eighty nine sixty nine cents a cubic yard for them to come in, grind, and haul away. We're paying for that, but we're not getting anything in to help pay for that. So I just think that all the things that we've done, which is all in the right pattern, all in the right things are going forward with our transfer station, our bulky pickup, which is great. I'm glad we're doing $150 per truckload, which, you know, I was already told I'd be being going out and measuring people and you know, loads and, you know, oh, I'm sorry, but you're, <laughs> you're a little bit over. You got to pay another 150 bucks. Uh, I'm OK with that. I don't mind because we need money. But we need to do something about the yard waste. That's my biggest one of my biggest kicks, yard waste. You know, our trucks are being used and abused. They're breaking down a lot with the yard waste. You know, we have high, small hydraulic lines that from a branch that comes in and breaks it. So now you have the fleet maintenance costs. You got the hydraulic costs. You got the lines costs. People don't see this stuff. We do. We're the inside people that see all this stuff. We need to do something about yard waste. There needs to be a fee. Again, after five trips, after seven about yard waste emergencies we have a you know hurricane goes through god bless nothing happens like that thank you lord but we don't want to just give away for five bucks or even 20 you know two tons of yard waste coming collected so I, I there is more but i really don't want to hold this up any longer uh, as you can see i came more prepared if you have any other questions you know how to get a hold of me um i'd be more than happy to help you out I'm sure that anybody in this department, including Mr. Nunes, our director of public works, would be more than happy to meet with you. Um, we just need to do something to get some more money in there. Taxpayers should not be paying the full burden of that place. Contractors and, and yard waste and things like that. That's just me. I'm sorry. I, I, I do apologize for everything. If I took too long, if I'm repeating myself, but it just seems like we need to do that. We need to repeat ourselves over and over again to make things happen. Squeak wheel gets the grease. Is that what they call it? Thank you so much. Have a good evening, and I Thank do you. appreciate it. No one else like to speak specifically on this ordinance. Bulky waste. Anyone else? Anyone else like to speak on a bulky waste? I'm sorry. Fees. Fire on the fees. Correct. Yeah. Name and address, sir. Please. Neil Nark on Five Clear Street. Uh, just one thing on the pricing here, and I, I just came in late minute on this thing here, but don't price it so that the average person is going to start circumventing the system. 
And we've seen that in Suffield, and I see it in Hartford even now. When the town says, okay, we're gonna have large bulky pickup, and the average person in Hartford is not very well off, and you tell them, oh, it's gonna be 80 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever it is, uh, they're not gonna go for that. What they are gonna go for, they're gonna find a little side, side street somewhere and make a little midnight dump somewhere. And that's, that's big time there, so you, you think you're gonna save it here, but you're gonna have to give Public Works another job or another few positions with a truck to go out and pick this stuff up. And it's happened in Suffield, I've seen that happen. You have everything and everything's out there. And uh, that was a few years ago, I'm not sure exact time frame, but in Hartford that's going on right now. So uh, keep that there. And also from a, a taxpayer standpoint, I just can't see things disappearing off of the ledger here. You know, we're paying, paying your proper amount of taxes to cover this thing, and I know costs are going up. So I would say keep that all in mind and keep it included in the tax package we're already paying. Okay, uh, you, you've pulled out the sewer tax, we lost leaf pickup, you know, every year you see things disappear and every year you see new, quote, gimmicks coming on the tax roll somewhere. So, you know, please uh, keep that in mind. I'll see you for part two. Thanks. Thank you. Sir? I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but it was my understanding. All right, sir, wait, please wait. When you, come, you can come up, sit down, and name an address. With my understanding, agenda number seven, the public would be allowed to speak. Should I, should I wait for agenda no, you, number No, this seven? is a public hearing, correct. So this again? is on the bulky waste fees, though, a specific public hearing. So this uh, is this. Yeah, but this is not. This is a specific public hearing for the bulky wake fees. The public communication. I wait then for. Yeah, the unless you want to speak on this, you're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else like to speak on the uh, bulky wake fees? Anyone else? Going once, going twice for a second time. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I said I was done. But just to re-up, don't take it out on the people who are answering the phones and the guys who are picking up this stuff up. You know, they're human and they're just trying to make a living. That's it. Be nice to the people who are answering the phones. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for a second time? Anyone else? Going once, going twice. I declare the public communications closed. I mean, public hearing closed, excuse me. And now we move, it's uh, seven o'clock, so we're gonna move right into the regular meeting. Um, it is call the meeting to order. It's Monday, August 2nd, 2021. It is 7.02 in the council chambers. Prayer by Councilor Hemler. Um, first, I'm gonna start with a, uh, with a quote and then, I'll, and then I'll do a quick prayer. This is a quote by Corey Tenboom. She lived in Europe during World War II. She said that, remember the righteous didn't suddenly become righteous, they just refused to go over the cliff with the rest of society. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Please guide us, guide this council to do your will and do what is right for Enfield. In Jesus' name, amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hemler. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mangini. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Councillor Riley. Here. Councillor Safraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungeyer. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. And Councilor uh, Sakala? Here. And Councilor Crisati is absent. That's 10 present and one absent. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, item four, fire eva evacuation announcement. In case of a fire, we have exit doors in the back of the building. Please go orderly left or right through those doors. Or to uh, doors to our left to the audience's right. We have an exit, then there's a door right out in the hallway. In case of fire, please go down the stairs in an orderly fashion out into the parking lot. Uh, item five, minutes of the preceding meeting, special meeting July 6, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. By Councillor Man uh, Mangini, seconded by Councillor Muller. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions, 10 in favor, zero against. Do I have a motion for to approve the regular meeting of July 6, 2021? Second. By Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Mangini. Is there any additions, deletions, or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? 
Opposed? Abstentions? We have 10 in favor, Sheila, zero against. Item six, special guest. We have none. Item seven, public communications. Sir, you were, if you want, I will go to you first since you were, you want just name and address and you have five minutes. Just want to be up front with you. Only five? Only five. But you get, you get a second chance, so five and three the first within the first hour. But I can get back for a second five. Three. Parking for three. So you get eight minutes. Just uh, make sure the light's on, sir, name and address, and, you, and I'll wait till you're ready, then I'll start the time. So take your time. Before I start, uh, what information you need from me? Just name and address. That's name it? And address. address. Name and address. That's it. Russell Meyer, Lock Drive. Is, is the light on? Light's on. You got it. You have the floor, and I'll start the time when you're ready. Welcome. Russell Meyer, Lock Drive. Welcome. Okay. Is this being recorded at all? It sure is. No. Yes, you're on TV right now. Okay. I'm talking to you about 31 Lock Drive. And I'm going to, it's going to take more than five minutes, so I'll come back later. The problem I have with 31 Lock Drive is I've lived in that neighborhood across the street for more than 60 years. I'm an original homeowner. 31 Lock Drive is not the original. In 2019, I believe it was November, it might have been January, they were cited by the Blight Committee as a Blight residence. So that apparently it, it, it had existed before that. $75 a day until it was cleared. They offered the homeowner or the occupant, I'm not sure which, a chance to challenge the Blight. They chose not to. So from that day to this to today, $78,000 is charged against this piece of property. I, I have talked to Joe Bosco, and I said to him, will you look at it? And he said he's familiar with it. He would look at it and give me a call the following Monday. That Monday never came, Joe. I wonder why. I wrote a letter to the, to the town manager outlining my difficulty with that house no response. I called last Wednesday. He's busy. I called Thursday. He's busy, but might be leaving for the rest of the week. I said, I'll call back Monday. That's today. I chose not to do it, but to bring it before you. What you have at 31 Lock Drive is a cancer that's rapidly growing. If any of you have ever been by that house recently, you can't see the garage or the cars. The lawn has not been mowed in three years. Between, over the lawn is driven a car over the, over the town issued, uh, town constructed curbing. There, it's a two car garage with a double wide driveway. In that driveway are three cars. One is a, is a Ford with a temporary license from Vermont, been there for more than a month, drivable, although you can hear it a month away, a, a, a mile away. A truck which is drivable, Another car, which is apparently a guest of the house, he parks in the grass, and he's the guy who drives over the hayfield. Between the cars, that's on, that's on the driveway alone, between the cars and the garage are mattresses, bicycles, wheelchairs, uh, grocery, grocery, grocery carts, uh, all kinds of trash. To the, to the right of the driveway, is an undrivable car with no, with no uh, right front fender, cannot possibly be registered. It was in a head-on collision. They towed the car literally with the wheel at 45 degrees. That's with the hood up, and undrivable. Behind that is an 18 or 20 foot trailer leaning at about 15 or 20 degrees. That lawn has not been mowed in at least three years. Behind the house, it, uh, fairly covered by, by, by hay today, but come the end of this month, that's going to be gone. Our broken chairs, uh, tables, and so forth. The Blight Committee, who I think deserves a lot of credit, and you guys do not because you're not doing a damn thing about it, have done at least all they can do, and that is they have filed a lien against the property, and it's on record in the town records. Two and a half years, 
why don't you guys do something? And I'll guarantee if anybody on this panel were living anywhere close to this house, you would not allow it to be there one day. Get rid of it. The house has been foreclosed. It's now in the courts in Hartford, which means eventually eviction, but I don't know whether that's gonna happen or not. The house has drugs uh, that go by. I, I witnessed a drug purchase. And I called the police and I said, here is the color of the car, the type of car, and as much as I could of the guy who was driving the car, but he was only from the windows up. Th 30 seconds. I'm very quick. I'm yep, very no quick. worries. I'll, I'll, I'll just want to give you a heads up. Yep, no worries. He was very, uh, I saw the transaction go down. I saw money transferred. I saw the pa the packet go into this guy's pocket who was, has one leg. I called the police. Did they ever show up? Nope, didn't show up. Didn't show up. My question is why? Joe, why don't you do something about it? It's your, it's your area. Why doesn't the town council do something to get rid of these people? I live, I live in an area that's affected by that cancer. What goes on inside, inside the house, I have absolutely no idea. Time's up, sir. I will you, leave. You'll have a if within an hour, you have a second chance to come up. It's, it's a disgrace to the town. I li I'd like the, to be fixed. Yeah. I understand it's a one-way conversation. You can't respond, but you know exactly how I feel. And show you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I'll respond during the management report, yeah, no Mr. Worries. Mayor. No worries. Yep. So Mr. Meyer doesn't have to wait. I'm going to pass some pictures around. If you guys would just slide by the first six, pass it down. So that's a minute each slide. Huh? Minute each slide. Nothing. Go ahead. Sorry, it's a joke. Just even paying attention. Welcome. Name and address, and you have the floor, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Name is Peter Genitis, Three Farmstead Circle. I've come before you to speak on two issues. The second issue is getting passed along right now. The first issue is whether or not to uh, have the kids return to school this September having to wear masks. And apparently, I think the governor may be making the decision tomorrow. But if the governor's decision is whether you can or cannot have to wear masks is left up to the local communities, then I would urge you, with working with the Board of Education, not to mandate the masks. I won't go into the multiple reasons why kids should not be required to wear masks or the issues of the unintended consequences of wearing masks, nor the reasons the NEA and the AFT are trying to shove this down the throats of parents across the country. As individual, individuals, the members of the town council and the board of education are entitled to your opinions. I ask members of both the town council and the board of education to educate yourselves on the topic of kids being forced to wear masks. Okay, the second thing is that the iPad going along, the basin behind my house. I've been here before about that. I've talked to a board member, two board members about it. Um, some things have been done. Where I live, there's a big basin. The town was required to cut it for 25 years. They came once. I think the second time they tried to come, it was too wet to mow. I mowed that thing, compliments of me to the town, for I don't know how many years. I mowed the whole thing whenever it was dry enough to mow. Kenny, the uh, head of, I think is the Department of uh, Public Works or the Highway Department, his nice guy has come down. He's looked at what the problem is. He's had people come down and clean, clean the grates out. All the grates on our street, it's a cul-de-sac, flow into the grate right in front of my house and then out the back underneath the ground into this basin. He's had kids, some guys come out and dig deep holes where the water comes out. That helped a little bit, but it didn't solve the problem. What happens is, he told me there's nothing else to do. I watch when I drive around this town, you guys are putting pipes and everything under roads, tearing up roads, parking lots, whatever. You're putting sewer pipes, water pipes, I don't know. They're just a bunch of pipes. Can you pause so I can just give you the next couple pictures? Oh, sure, yeah. Oh my 
that to see it more. <laughs> Okay, so what, what's happening, I've asked Kenny, can't you take smaller pipes and put them into the bigger pipes? And it's supposed to go across the basin to what, what, what is it called, a catch basin at the end, where the water goes into that and then it goes across into Raffia Road and wherever it goes. He said you can't do that. I don't know why you can't do it. I mean, if you've got the technology to build pipes and channels under the water, I mean, under the roads, you should be able to do that. I've lived there for 35, 36 years, and it's only been the last four years that we've had this serious drainage problem. You've created, a swamp has been created back there. <sighs> all the other, well, as I said, all the drains come into that, that one place under, right in front of our house. Um, The channel at the end where the water is supposed to go into, there's a rock channel that goes across the basin, but the other thing is where the water is supposed to go is about a foot too high. The water can't get into it. So I don't know how you can correct it, but it's got to be corrected. Um, I think there's a couple things you can do. You can come down and, and, and try to put pipes in there if there's any way of doing it. You could build a berm along the rock channel so the water just doesn't overflow. Because when it comes out that pipe behind my house, it's just going everywhere, as you can see some of those pictures. Um, or bring in a bunch of trap rock, try to build something out that way. I'm asking you, I'm begging you, please, please fix this problem. It's a problem that was created by the town because you didn't do what you should have done 36 years ago. Thank you. I'm just Thank waiting. You, you have 30 seconds. I mean, yeah, yeah. 30 seconds. Make sure you get your money's worth. Clean up the guy's property <laughs> over there. You can see it almost looks like sewage coming out. I, I, I assume it's rust from the inside of the pipe, but I mean, I know it's a bad season for mosquitoes, but uh, I think we're breeding them now. Thank you, appreciate it. I think you're gonna keep it. I think you're gonna keep it on you. <laughs> Anyone else like speak for the council? Hans, oh, Sarah, let everyone go first. Uh, gentleman right there, Neil, and then gentleman in the back. Then. jammed in there. Yeah, Neil Nark on 5 Clear Street again. Uh, talking trash again, um, as we know, the trash energy plant in Harvard is going to be shutting down middle of next year sometime. And I was just thinking of this, and I don't know if we can do it or not as a town with other towns. And that is, have all the town managers get together or the town councils get together, all, all, all the towns in the state, and literally try to get a class action suit against the governor for failing to keep this property going. Uh, they, they put in money down there a lot. Joe knows all the figures offhand. I don't have that with me at this time. But we put a lot of money in there and just abruptly shut it down and ship this stuff out and make it some other state's problem is not really the way to address this thing. Trash has to go somewhere. And I'm thinking if they all get together and and do it nicely first, and if you have to do a class action suit, do it, because, uh, you know, he's just evading his responsibility there. You know, the, the state's not in the entertainment business, and he'd rather spend the money right now fixing up the Excel Center in Hartford. Uh, that's not what it should be done. 
I mean, they've got the money. They should fix this up and, and do it. I mean, and I'd like to see a full audit of everything there. That's not our job, of course, but I'd like to see a full audit. You know, they're collecting, they're charging, they're making money on electricity. Why is this thing falling through the cracks? You know, um, Joe, if you could address that later, I'd appreciate maybe you know offhand, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything and see what's going on with that. But uh, we got a plan now for later. Otherwise, we're going to be uh, spending a lot of money hauling stuff around. And we don't know what the fees are going to be next year when you try to plan it now. It's, it's very, uh, it's a very big of a variable that I can see. Costs are just going up everywhere. And that would, you know, and that would benefit everybody in that consortium that is shipping stuff over to Hartford. All the other towns would, have, would uh, benefit from that as well. But there's no reason why we can't get together and just put a little pressure on them, turn up the heat a little, and not just, oh, we're going to close it. That's it. Uh, too bad. We'll just send it out, you know. We don't care if we send it to Ohio and here and everything else. It's not, not the way to do it. Thanks for your time. Thanks for coming in, everybody, too. I know it's a nice day, but I, I, I keep saying I, I appreciate everybody taking their time off doing this. You know, great people here. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Gentleman in the back, then. Yep. Welcome. Just name and address. You have the floor. Just make sure the light's on. And you have the floor. Matthew Schmidt, North Main Street. Good evening, town council members. Um, let me start by stating. Oh, sorry. I want to talk about the subject of masks in schools. Let me start by stating what we know. We know that school aged children are not and have never been the drivers of this pandemic. And we know that they rarely get severely ill. We know that the recent spike in cases caused by the Delta variant will subside in a couple of months because that is what has happened in mostly unvaccinated India, and it's happening right now in mostly vaccinated England. And we know that deaths have not kept, kept pace with the rise in cases, thank God. We also know, though some might argue to what extent, that masks can harm children physically, socially, mentally. We know that some schools in this nation and some internationally have operated without masking their children and have not had the fear disastrous results we are constantly told will happen. Finally, we know that we didn't know many of these things when the COVID crisis first started, but now we do. Mitigation efforts are supposed to balance risks and benefits. Well, in regard to masks in schools, the risk to children clearly outweighs the benefit. We know this now. So we must, we are obligated by our humanity to stop putting children in harm's way. While school policy normally falls within the scope of the Board of Education, the Town Council has the power of its constituents to make sure those policies don't put children at risk, especially when the potential harm is so wide ranging. I believe it is incumbent on this Council to, at the very least, begin to pressure the Board of Education to remove any mandatory mask policy. And if that fails, I would argue that it falls on this Council to use its power to order the Board of Education to do so. We have seen state and federal agencies in the name of public health use their power to usurp local government bodies, essentially punching down to impose their will on the populace. It is time for a local government body, in the name of public health, to use its power to impose the will of the populace. It's time for this council to punch up. To sit and wait for the next decree from the state is not an option. It is time to act. Let the world know that you won't sit by and watch Enfield's children be harmed unnecessarily. It is time to unmask our children. Thank you. Thank you. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you. Yeah. These are the ladies go first, but Maria will probably beat me up if I don't. No worries. Doug Finger, 44 Buchanan Road. This is a positive thing. July 8th, I was involved in a motor vehicle accident on Elm Street, and I was rear-ended by a vehicle. Um, two words, three words I never heard when I was a kid was the words, I want to give a, a shout out to. Uh, we used to say, hey, we just want to thank people. But I really want to thank, I sent the email out uh, to our town manager or public works, excuse me, uh, HR department. Our EMS program, those three people took care of me. They were fantastic. They stayed with me through the whole time. They kept me calm, which is really kind of hard to do. My wife can't even do it. Um, but <laughs> but um, they stayed with me in the hospital to the nurses came to me and a doctor. I really want to say I want to thank Chief Riggett for her staff for doing a above average 
what I feel for myself anyways, above average job. They're fantastic people. They're, she's gotta be very proud of that department. Our police department was there within a couple of minutes along with our Thompson Fire Department and the EMS was there and I'll tell you something, it was just like a total control of the whole situation from the accident, from diverting traffic to everything uh, and maintaining myself and the other people involved and keeping everybody safe. I just wanna give a, sh a shout out to all those people and thank you very much. I'm doing really good right now. Um, and I just can't thank them enough. And I just wanna say thank them to you through a public announcement. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. When everyone goes first, then we'll go to you. For those of you watching on television out there, I did speak earlier, so you're gonna hear the same thing again, but I think it's important enough to say it again. Um, good evening, my name is Marie Pisner, 25 Roy Street. As a resident of Enfield, I am encouraging all the Enfield residents to go to the Enfield Town webpage and educate themselves on the four referendums that I hope to see on the November ballot. Roads, roofs, recreation, and regional safety are very important to our community. First, roads. Since 2000, Enfield has maintained and upgraded our roads, and I believe every resident will want this continued. The safety of our roads are imperative to our town. Second, roofs. This referendum will include the elementary schools of Parkman, Crandall, Enfield Street, Street and the Stowe Early Learning Center. Henry Barnard's original building has been completed as well as Eli Whitney and the Hazardville Memorial. All of these have been funded by our CIP and are pay to go. Our police station, Enfield Annex and Alcorn will all be part of this as well. The schools will be in verse for 70% of the, by 70% from the state. However, when our, the public safety referendum is passed, the town will coordinate the roof for both buildings so it will not be paid twice. Third, the regional safety facility, the public safety facility. We have outgrown our police station and EMS. By this referendum passing, we will not only be upgrading our current police station, but we will be adding a state-of-the-art training facility. Surrounding towns have already said that they will pay the town of Enfield to use this facility and it will save the taxpayers from spend, sending our officers out of town. Also, once the state of Connecticut approves the bonding that has been signed by both Representative Hall and Representative Arnone, we will be reimbursed the $12. million. So it will be a wash, it will call, cost our town nothing. There are two things that this, it leads me to the last uh, referendum, which is recreation. And I asked the residents of Enfield, what are the two things that are the most important? And I believe it is our schools and our quality of life. I believe in our schools and the passing of our recreation referendum will also give us the quality of life. It will help us to complete Higgins Park which will include a walking trail, a fitness center, and a band shell, an outdoor pool, as well as three additional sp splash parks for our families to enjoy. Everyone who knows me knows how much I love Enfield. And I know you all do too. These referendums passing will only make us prouder to call Enfield our home. So please, I am encouraging everyone in this room tonight and everyone watching to go to the website, look at the material, go to the town manager, call your counselors, educate yourself, and please vote in November, yes, for these referendums so that we can continue to move Enfield forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak for council for the first time? Sir. Welcome, name and address, and you have the floor. Josh Scanlon. Oh, I'm sorry, we just go right, yeah, right ahead. Uh, Josh Scanlon for Glendale Road. Welcome. And um, I mean, I think we've already heard tonight a lot of the facts or different opinions about masking our children. <clears throat> so I think that my experience that I would share um, 
with asking not to mask the children this year was how <clears throat> over the last few years, my son's always been a top-notch honor student. And even at the start of the year, he was able to handle some of the adversity. But as the year went on, his grades literally went from A's and B's to all F's, no matter how much me or his mother were able to help him or try and watch him or guide him. You can only update the app that we use with missed assignments so fast that it happens and next thing you know, he was already in a hole. And, um, and I think for me, it's more about the mental health. I don't think it should be a political issue, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, when we're talking about the welfare of our children mentally and education. Um, you know, the, the last year, I think, damaged a lot of kids. It's not just my kid. And I don't think that that can be fixed overnight. Like, it's going to take a while. And he was, he was 11 last year, and he's 12 currently. And I think that this did permanent damage. And I think, at least for me, uh, I'm at least happy he was a little older because I couldn't imagine I have two toddlers and an infant. And um, if they had to go to preschool wearing a mask, it would damage even their social ability to read people's emotions. And these are basic functions that even the kids much younger in kindergarten and preschool, that's part of their education. And um, I think that, uh, like um, this gentleman stated before me, that it's important that regardless of what the, the governor says or the president says, Town councils, boards of educations at the local level need to start standing up for the children because if they don't, no one else will. And I think that the couple parents that are here tonight is only a start and that if it does come down, you're going to start seeing larger and larger crowds because people are tired. It's at this point, I look at it as, a, as child abuse at this point. If my kid had a pre-existing condition or something like that, he would be vaccinated, he would wear the mask and stuff. But I don't think we should treat everyone the same when we have the statistics of who is most affected. And those are the people we should protect the most. Um, so I would ask that this, as the town council, and I'll be going to the Board of Education going forward, to make sure that our children are no longer mentally and uh, educationally abused and that we can try and recover some of the damages that occurred over the last year. Thank you. Thank you. No one else for the first time? Lucian? Welcome. Lucian LeFay, 54 Kimberly Drive. Also, Vice Chairman of the Enfield Veterans Council, Commander of Post 154, American Legion. I just want to talk, it's the first chance I've gotten to come here, and I want to talk about parades in the town. Coming out of COVID, we scheduled a Memorial Day parade. Unfortunately, it rained on our parade. Fourth of July came around, and the town yeah, asked the bad, Fourth of July bad. committee to put together a parade. They, they went out on a limb that morning and decided that they were going to go through with it. We had a little bit of mist. I heard you were arguing. That's what I heard when we were there. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I just want to say for all the veterans organizations in town, we were honored and proud that we led the first parade coming out of COVID in the town of Anfield. And I just want to let everybody know that, that as all the veterans organizations, we were very honored to be able to lead that parade because normally... Other people were out front, but we, we were the lead element. And it felt good to open this town up. Rightfully so. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone for the first time? Welcome. Name and address, you have the floor. Misty Martinez, 204 Green Manor Road. So I just want to piggyback on what a few other parents here have said tonight about unmasking our kids. Um, I think one of the main concerns for me, and I want to preface this by saying that I have a lot of respect for the Board of Education and the way that they handled the pandemic last year, but we're in a different place now than what we were last year. 
Um, my child alone is men he's medically challenged, and we were very scared in the very beginning of the pandemic because we didn't know what we were looking at, but we do now. So. Um, Many parents have reached out to the Board of Education privately to um, discuss their concerns about the upcoming school year because we really don't have a plan and it's just a few weeks away. And we've been in touch with other parents throughout the state of Connecticut and we know very well that there are at least 13 other school districts to date that have made it optional for the parents about masking their children. And the feedback that we're getting from the Board of Education, including the superintendent, again, no disrespect, is a word for word response that it's not up to the Board of Education or the superintendent in that it's up to the state. And that's concerning because when it comes to the health of our children, now we do have facts about how this is impacting them negatively. And if we're getting feedback like that from town leaders, that's very concerning for a parent, um, especially with three weeks away to the school, you know, the school year. We need to make decisions about what we're doing or maybe, you know, where we want to put our children. And if we feel that they're going to be negatively impacted, their health psychologically, mentally, you know, physically, then we need to know what we're looking at. Um, we don't want to wait to hear what the governor has to say because they are, there's no liability for them. Um, and we're the ones that have to deal with the repercussions, the health of our children from whatever this may do to them if they continue to wear masks. So that's my plea to you is if you can maybe go back to the Board of Education and we can have more dialogue on this versus just getting like canned responses, we would appreciate that. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else for the first time? Anyone else for the first time? Anyone else for the first time? Here now we'll get a second time. Sir, you have three minutes. Yep, you're welcome. Come on up. And sorry, I know you just name and address again. I'm sorry, just to make sure we follow the procedure. Welcome. Russ Welcome. Meyer, Lock Drive. One thing I did not indicate before is where 31 Lock Drive is. It's at the apex of Lock, Alimo, and Barrett. Three roads come, come together. I want to expand a little bit on the, on the drug deal that went down. After I called the police, I had an errand to run, and I went up Lock Drive. I'm sorry, I went up Alamo Drive, immediately behind the so-called escape car. At the end of, of Alamo, in the parking lot of the of the almost deserted shopping center, two police cars, two cruisers, not a one of them responded. My question is why? Why isn't the police department more responsive? I'm sure you. I'm sure you're aware of this, Carl, very well. Why isn't the police department more responsive? A telephone call they could have captured not only the drug dealer, but perhaps his supplier. I also called the fire department, thinking the house is not, is not safe. They said, not a problem, because the windows on the first floor are large enough for people to escape through the window if there's a fire. I, that, that's maybe right. But how about all this trash in front? How are you going to stop a mattress? That's a long, mo smoldering fire. Uh, I call the health department. They looked at the house. They would not give me a response as to what their inspection showed. So my question is, why are you people not enforcing the ordinances of the town? It has nothing to do with the courts. You have an ordinances that are very broad and allow you all kinds of leeway. Why don't you enforce them? Get rid of this trash, this cancer that's growing constantly. Why don't you stop drugs in this town? What I saw, I'm sure, is not, is not the only part of Enfield that has drugs. Do something, something. What they're, what they're doing to me is lowering the value of my house. I'm almost 94. I can't stay there too much longer. That trash dump, cancer, 
is expanding daily. It's, re it's reducing the cost of my house. I object to that, and I would think you guys would also. Something has to be done. Please do it quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for the second time? Yep, come on, Peter. You're older than me. Oh, you're talking. <laughs> 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 Welcome. Just read three minutes whenever you're ready. Peter Janitis, Three Farmstead Circle. Just a couple of comments on things that other people have said. Uh, I don't think the uh, town council can order the Board of Education literally to do anything. Uh, but there are ways you guys work together, or you should be working together, I, I would assume you still are. And there are other ways you can apply pressure. I know that because I've been on that side. Um, at one time, as, as far as this mask issue is, I remember when I was on the board, we had that cathedral issue, which made national news, never mind just state news. Uh, and then, unfortunately, uh, we backed down on that. Uh, the roofs. I don't know, I still don't ever know why you can't put a pitch on a school roof. Um, you know, even if it's the smallest pitch where you can get stuff to run off. You know, look into that, see if it can be done. The walking trail, um, I know, I think you've already allocated money to go all the way out to Broadbrook Road. Uh, I'd rather see you going the other way and go down in front of JFK and then around the entire athletic field and then back up. It'd be flat. You're still adding about a mile, mile and a half of a walk, and you're not going up and down, or near places where cars are going by 30, uh, 40, 50 miles an hour. And the last thing about your trash, you can put it in my basin. <laughs> we'll leave on a high note. Thank you. Anyone else like speak for the second? Walter Cruzel, 21 Charney Road. Um, I also was here earlier for the referendum. I implore you that you guys update the policies for ETV, that whenever there's a meeting of all of you in this room, it should be live on TV, because that was 45 minutes that should have been filmed and put on YouTube. It was very informative. You always, you always say that we can't get out to the public about referendums. Well, that was a loss on our on our part. And I don't know what happened, but I believe, like I said, I think a policy change would correct that, that whenever there's a meeting in here, other than executive sessions, that they should be live on, on TV. That's what it's there for. It's at your discretion. But I, I agree, back again on the referendums, they are important. I do want to bring up the, the bond part of the referendums. This is the perfect time to borrow. It, the rates are at the lowest they'll ever be. And, and, and we got these projects started. We got the roads started since 2000. We got the roofs that need to be done. They've been needed to be done for years. And we do, I know Barnard did have some pitch added to it when it was replaced so I know that every roof gets it gets engineered and and some pitch does get added to it so the recreation would help this town in especially in in, in this area Thompsonville area and the public uh, safety would also help us with other town you know regionalizing our our, our uh, services break, you know opening it up for other towns that can't afford it and it's just a win-win-win for all of us, and I, I implore people, please, just vote yes for these referendums. They're important. It's work that has to be done, and it's the only way it can be done because of our our uh, our limit on the per charter that we can only spend so much per year per project. So please, vote yes on all the referendums. Thank you.
Hi, Neil Narcon again for the third time. Uh, new topic here is the town has several properties in the old section of Thompsonville. They're starting around with a strand, and I don't know if the post office is part of the deal or not. But I'm thinking, you know, we have the problem in America is we're not making anything here, so it's going to be real tough to recover out of the economic problem we have now. So I'm thinking the town should be able to grant or give somebody uh, as a future tenant there or even person buying a, a huge tax abatement to open up a small business or manufacturing or something there to kind of get a little more employment going, make something in America there. Now, right now, you're not making any taxes on it, and, and I doubt you're going to see anything down the road. And, and just tearing them down is going to end up looking like Chicago, Detroit, when you have here's a house, and then you got three empty lots, and here's another house, and then you got a bunch of empty lots. It's nothing. You know, it's like a bunch of teeth missing. And, um, and I'd like to see the Strand try to get renovated somehow, too, or at least a roof on it, too. We're doing roofs to add that to the package and just try to save a real landmark like that. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's, that's what I'd like to see. Take those buildings, put them back to some use, and then down the road, hey, if those people decide it's not working out, then at least you have a building that's uh, up to speed now. It would be easy to sell and do something else with. Okay. Save the Strand. Thank you. Uh, sorry, council, public communication close. Uh, well, item eight, council communications, Councilor Bosco. On the masks, I don't think any of our kids should be wearing masks. And adults, if they want them, they wear them. Especially now that there's a vaccine out. Why do I need to protect? Why do you need to protect from me? You, got, you want the vaccine? You take the vaccine. And that's the problem with America is we're losing our choices. And the, the bad thing about these masks are we're teaching our kids that we got to be compliant. And, and that's the big problem now. It, we're, we're teaching our kids from a young age that we need to be compliant. Now, the thing is, we keep being told that there's not much we could do because of the state. Now, if there's other towns that are doing something different, then you guys should be up here letting us know what towns are doing something different so we can look into it and, and give the Board of Ed because we really don't have anything to do with it, but then you give them the ammunition to be able to do what you need done. But as it stands now, we're told you can't do that. Um, I would I would support whatever 110 percent on the masks. I, I it's I'm, I got a, a four year old grandson that's all over the place. Try to keep a mask on him. My granddaughter, all she does is complain that she's got the mask. They can't breathe. Um, even with me, when I when, wear a mask, I have a hard time. I have a hard time breathing, never mind choking a little kid out. You know, that's, you're covering their face. And then they don't get to see their friends. All they see is eyes. So um, I, I agree 110% with you on that. Uh, Neil, there's things coming down there. And when, when you finally see all the plans, you're going to be happy. Uh, there's things that we, we just can't save some buildings. I mean, it's, it's time to go. Mr. Myers, if I did not call you back, I apologize. Is he still here? Yeah, he, left. he left. Well, he'll have, if he watches the tape. If, he, if, if, if I wish he would have stayed because then he can get the, the response he wants. Um, if I didn't call him back, I apologize. I usually call everyone back. But it's just as distressing to us sitting here on the council that... We have properties in town that we can't do nothing with. Now, I don't know if it's legal. I don't know if we can. Uh, you know, it, it would be another discussion for another day on what to do and when to start foreclosures. Uh, but right now, if I'm not mistaken, we don't have that ability. All right. Yeah, so and, Chris will handle that at town manager. Yep, yep. yep. Well, I just, I feel bad for him because he thinks I did nothing, but there's only so much we could do. All we do is set policy. And we can't go to the town manager and tell him, make sure you sick the dogs on this person. Uh, it, that doesn't happen like that. And there's nothing more we can do than make a phone call and get the right people on it. And that's been done multiple times on his property. Other than that, um, I'm all set.
Councillor Mangini, then Councillor Hemler, then Councillor Riley. I want to talk trash right now. I'm going to go back to um, the solid waste ordinance. Our committee, uh, Councilman Bosco, Deputy Mayor uh, Suzak, and I have uh, been working on these um, resolutions, amendments to solid waste and the bulky waste. Just for clarification, what we have in front of us, what we had the public hearing on was an ordinance. What we're looking to do is a policy for tipper barrels, which means that the fees are going to go into the policy. Um, for example, a second barrel uh, will be uh, cost based upon uh, the going rate, perhaps new as it is, it may go up. Um, the third uh, tipper barrel will be, again, based upon the cost. But just for clarification, because it seemed to be a little bit confusing that what we had addressed was the ordinance and not the policy. The policy will be coming forward closer to September. So I just wanted to bring that out there for people to understand. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hamlet, then Councilor Riley, then Councilor Deputy Mayor Suzak. Yeah. Um, first to the parents that came out here, I'm 100% in agreement with you guys. Um, keep fighting for your kids. That's all I have to say. Just keep fighting. I don't think we have any power, but we're just keep fighting. Um, there's a few events that I want to bring to everybody's attention. Uh, tomorrow night is National Night Out. It is on the town green, August 3rd, 6 to 8. Bring your kids. It's to meet uh, uh, Enfield police officers. Should be a fun time. So hope to see a lot of people out there. Uh, another kid event, uh, New Day Church is hosting a family-friendly drive-in movie. It's August 13th, 8.45 p.m. It's completely free. Popcorn snacks, drinks provided. Um, Opera House Players. They're, uh, they're having a show after over a year. Um, it's going to be Shrek, another family-friendly um, event. This one's not free, though. Um, and it's going to be at the Annex, and that is on August 20th. So if you go on their website, operahouseplayers.org, you can get more information on that. All right, the thing that I really wanted to talk about, so give me a, give me a moment. Um, as most of you know, I'm in favor of prohibiting the recreational marijuana sales in Enfield. I know we're having the public hearing next meeting, but I wanted to get some, some ideas and I wanted some people, I wanted everybody to think about these things. Um, I want to keep Enfield a place to raise a family and not a destination to buy marijuana. I've heard some reasons to have pot legal and sold in Enfield, and I want to address them. Some people say, well, it's better if it's regulated. Well, OxyContin's been regulated, and that's even by doctors, and look what happened with that. Some people say it'll take drugs off the street. Does anybody really believe that's going to happen? The, the cost of marijuana plus the tax, it won't be cheap. But on the street, synthetic marijuana, other drugs will be. Um, everybody else is selling it. Well, I have a bridge my mom told me not to jump off of if you're interested. Um, tax revenue. This is, this is one that many people hang their hat on. Due to market saturation, the sales and the corresponding tax revenue won't be nearly as much as anyone thinks. The cost, both, both fiscal and social, will be much higher than the revenue. It just it won't be worth it. So a couple things to consider. The bill itself is called recreational marijuana. What does that tell kids? It's fun. Not a good thing. Not a good message for kids. Um, a couple of weeks after the after Connecticut passed the law, there was a PSA campaign started warning parents that THC laced gummy bears. That's disturbing. Um, Colorado ER visits skyrocketed after legalization. Tonight's agenda, if you look at it, there's three items on there about addiction services. Two of them are transfers of, of town's funds to combat addiction. And, and I don't believe for a minute, and no one can ever convince me that it's not a gateway drug. It is. Um, for 18 months, I've heard follow the science. Follow the science. That's all I've heard all over the news. Well, Connecticut Medical Association says legalization is a bad idea. 
The side effects, look on the CDC website, side effects include memory problems, psychosis, that's just to name a few. So I ask this question to all Enfield citizens. Do you want Enfield to be known as a destination to buy weed? Or do you want to keep it as a place to raise a family, shop, visit a park? I choose the latter. I ask everyone to consider all the implications because everything has a cause and effect. Let's not go off the cliff like the rest of society. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Riley. Okay. Um, I had a couple of business items I wanted to touch on first. Um, I would like to request through the mayor to the town manager that we have um, monthly hazardous waste collection days at um, Jablonski. That'd be great. Um, I know there's a lot of people doing home improvements and last time it was full early and not everybody got to dispose of it. So there's obviously people waiting to dispose of those things. So if we could do it monthly, that would be awesome. Um, another question and even Carl, you might know this, but on Saturday morning into Sunday morning, I was awoken at 1.35 in the morning by a phone call from Everbridge telling me that Abbey Road was closed. Now, you know, if that had happened during the day, you know, that's really important. At 1.35 in the morning, I don't know how many people are driving down Abbey Road. Now, 91 is shut down, okay, please call me. You, got, you know, Route 5 is closed, okay, call me. But I don't know if there could be like some sort of cutoff, so we don't be waking people up. I mean, I didn't go back to bed until like 4 a.m. after that call. Um, so if we can um, relook at that, that would be cool. Um, the other thing um, I wanted to talk about, um, uh, I have um, a son that goes to Prudence Crandall. Um, there was a little girl that went to that school and uh, she passed away. Um, I didn't get to make it to the uh, wake for her, but I feel really bad for her parents, and I just wanted to pass my condolences along to them. Um, and then <clears throat> I wanted to address the unmask your kids. Um, I do have two kids in school, not just at Bruins Crandall, but uh, the other one goes, she's going to be in second grade. Um, <laughs> this year was tough for them, for sure, for very sure. Um, they're in summer school right now, and um, they wear their mask at summer school. And then we go, and later in the day, we do our errands. We go out and we get ice cream, and there's all these kids that they were just in school with, and now nobody's wearing their mask. Um, so those are difficult questions to field to my kids on why I have to wear it here, but now I can go and play with so-and-so, and I don't have to wear my mask. Um, and I get, I get it. There are definitely parents who want their kids to wear their masks all the time. I've heard that as well. Um, but I think in the town of Enfield, um, as a parent, you should have the option. Either you have your kid wear their mask or they don't wear their mask. And that's your decision. That's the, the decision that you make as a family. And, and you should go with it. And we shouldn't have that option. Thanks. Thank you, Council Deputy Mayor Suzak and Councilor Ungar. I'm going to follow off Councilor Riley. I have to apologize for that phone call. That, to me, to be woken up at 1.34 a.m. because, yes, an accident is serious, but my words over and over and over again a road closure is an inconvenience. We have a lot of people who cannot tell the difference between something that is serious and something that is an inconvenience. I understand that, you know, who made the call was a um, new to this position. But I have citizens out there that want to be notified on everything and they for lack of a better term, they badger the police over the fact that road closures are not always reported. To me, I keep saying it over and over again, 
for everybody who's not involved in the accident, it's an inconvenience. Most of our streets have easy ways that traffic can be routed around. I certainly hope we don't ever again get a phone call like that. I don't know if it was just District 3, obviously. <laughs> Councilor Riley got it, so it was District 4 as well. I got it too. And District, <laughs> so this went out townwide. And I'll tell you, I, I like, I didn't get back to sleep till four o'clock because it was like I, I'm there stewing over the fact that this this happened, and for me, it's I have been involved in numerous conversations about emergency and inconvenience, and I feel like I am the just the voice in the, that nobody listens to, and. I'll have to apologize to the whole town because I guess this Joey is our night to apologize. <laughs> so, and then I'm gonna clarify. For probably the umpteenth millionth time, every roof is pitched. They have interior drains. The drains drain into a, a drainage system. You put on a gable framed roofing system. You've got to capture all your water in rain gutters. It's going to flow onto your sidewalks. It's going to create a problem. We've had problems in a lot of our gable frames roofs with that same thing. We get ice dams, we get icicles, we get everything else. So on large buildings like our schools are, a conventional roof is really a better way to go it doesn't last any less time. As a matter of fact, we have like miracle roofs. They're almost 40 years old. So I, we can't complain about having to do roofs. So that's my last clarification on that because um, I'm not running again. <laughs> Hopefully I won't in the next five meetings have to clarify that. But I'm gonna make a motion to suspend the rules and move items A1 through A5 B1, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. Motion made second by Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councilor uh, Mangini. Is there any discussion on the motion to move those items to miscellaneous for possible vote? Hearing none by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Ten in favor, zero against, Sheila. Motion passes. All set? I am. I'm all set, Mike, thank you. Councilor Ungar. Okay, first off, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and expressing your concerns to us because some things we just don't know about until you come and, and, and explain them to us. Um, with Mr. Meyer, I hope that we can get back to him about his property and his concern there. And um, yeah, yeah, Chris Chris will address that in a town manager report. Okay. Um, Neil, thanks for coming out and expressing your concerns and it's nice to see you. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly on the masks. Um, I feel all your concerns about that and keep talking about it. Um, my son is a teacher at JFK and I talked to a lot of teachers in Enfield and out of Enfield and this has been such a trying year. The teachers, the students, the parents, it's, uh, you know, we're all just trying to make it and get through. And just when we think there's a light at the end of the tunnel, something else comes along. Um, I did want to mention that there was a town in the state of Connecticut, I believe it was Cornwall. They never missed a beat. They never missed one single day. They didn't Zoom. They went to school every single day. I think they had one or two snow days, but they went every day and I don't think they wore masks. I'm not sure. And, and so I asked this teacher, you know, did anyone get sick or come down with COVID? And they said there were two. And she didn't say if they were students or teachers, but there were two. And it's a small community in Connecticut, but I'm saying maybe we should look a little harder for some other type of answers. Um, and Peter, I hope you can find some resolve with your yard. That's quite a frustration. So, okay, that's all I got, thanks. Anyone else have any comments? I'll be brief, you know, uh, Chris, just real quick, I wanna mention the social services folks, again, and, and the police, as we get, as we start talking about some, some things in the next month, on average, we get maybe one or two a week on Narcan save that our, our police and our EMS and our social services people are involved in. Yeah. I mean, we're saving more lives than creating problems for people. And it's, I know we don't publicize because we can't, but I think people need to understand that the good stuff that's going on and 
our social services folks as well do a great job of reaching out to people in need. And I, I just recommend our, our residents, your taxes pay for it. We have so many programs that can help in, when you're in your time of need. Please feel free to reach out to one of your council members and we can direct you to our social services area. I mean, they do a great, great job and every day. There's always a, a pretty good story that we've helped somebody. So again, it's part of your taxes. Please don't, don't feel, feel free to reach out to one of us. Um, I'm, all, I'm all in on all four referendums. At some point, you have to change the way you do business or the business never changes. It's the time to be bold. It's the time to change the town and, and move it into another direction. We need young families living in this town. We need recreation for our young families. We do, again, if you look at Northern Connecticut for the regional public safety, we are the, we are the big player in Northern Connecticut and even Western Massachusetts. We need to have a regional center, including EMS, where again, we were one of the few towns that actually have a town run EMS program. And it's actually first class. This is a huge referendum. The roofs, I mean, if you look at the, when you look at the, all the information that's online, the average roof life's been about 25 years. And that's on a low end. Some of these roofs are over 40 years old. So again, it's time that we have to fix the elementary schools and the, and the, the ones that are on there. And of course the roads, I was on a council in the 90s when we did the first road referendum and it's been a huge success. And uh, there's still roads that unfortunately, as we are 25 years later, that still need to be done. And our PCI, which is pavement, someone keep me honest. There you go, thank you. Is one of the highest in the state. So your tax dollars are working. I mean, we have, I mean, I know that you can, I know there's roads off the top of my head that we're going to have issues with, but hopefully if you see the list, there's, I think it's a $30 million, very comprehensive, a little more reasonable than we had to do a few years ago. These four are so important. We're going to be voting on it. The public knows we'll have a special meeting August 20th, 30th, where we'll have, all we're doing is putting those four referendum questions to the ballot, which will be voted on in November. We want everyone to support it. And, and again, closing I, I, the individual, I mean, fantastic presentation by parents. Um, so I think no matter what you believe, so we're going to be talking in a month from now about a, uh, a, about a marijuana sale in town, which the federal government has a law. It's a violation of federal law. So there's a difference between a law and a mandate, okay? The federal government says you shouldn't be doing it, but the state passed it anyway, so we now have to have a resolution to deal with it. Yet that's law. So now a mandate, which is not a law, Everyone says we can't do anything because it's a mandate. A mandate is not a law. Okay? Everyone needs to be clear on what the difference between a law is and a mandate because I think we've gotten completely messed up when it comes to governing bodies, what the difference between a law and a mandate is. And for me, again, I, I, I've been saying this for over a year, the mental health anguish of our kids in this last year. That's why we're doing a lot of things that we're trying to do in town with the splash, splash pad, the, the, um, the playscape. Our kids have suffered more than anyone. Okay, it's, and you can, I'm not trying to compare who has done what. And, and the other issue too is we're talking about young kids. Who kept our economy going? Who was working in all the stores? The college kids, the high school kids. You could go to one of the stores in town, it was a high school kid working. Yeah, it was okay for them to work, but they can't sit in a classroom. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. I, I, I'm so happy you parents are showing up and starting to fight for your kids. You should have an option whether to put a mask on your kid or not. Sorry, you should. And if your, your child needs to have a mask, then so be it. I mean, it's called respect to everyone's opinion. We used to do that in this country, and it seems to be going out the, out the window now. You should have the right as a parent to choose what is best for your child. I mean, that's not even, I guess it's radical now. I don't know. It's scary. It really is it's scary. But you should have that choice as a parent. And you know what? If the public, if this is going to continue to go down that route, there's going to have to be other, we're going to have to start thinking of different ways of educating our kids. Because I, I, I hate to say this, but if you've seen some of the articles of other mayors, and I'm not comparing myself to other mayors, of some of the crime wave on young people, right? You've, you've probably saw the articles. How are you shocked when the kids were, in, were home all year long and you let them out when they get arrested after the first two or three times? You're shocked that they're doing things. And I, and I would it be an interesting experiment for people, maybe it's already been done, is some of these state officials and other mayors, and where were their kids? Were they going to school? I bet you'll find out a lot of them kids were in school. Well, the majority of your kids were sitting home for a year. And again, I'm sorry, the distance learning is not learning. Okay? My daughter was a senior. She didn't learn anything. So, I mean, at some point we have to start being honest about what's going on and understanding the difference between a mandate and a law. We have to go, we have to go with what would be a contentious public hearing a month from now to, to argue on something that is against federal law. 
And oh, by the way, there's a reason why you're going to have to pay cash if you, if you end up doing it. There's a reason. Yet, we're saying every mandate we have to follow. Every executive order we have to follow. It makes no sense from a strictly a public policy perspective. We are the governing body, but right, we can't tell the board head what to do. But I can tell you right now, I agree, the parents should have a choice whether they put a mask on their kid or not. Uh, okay? Uh, so, but again, I think we have to get back to the basics of what government is supposed to do. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Republican, whatever your position is, our job is not to continue to put people at each other's throats. And that's all we're doing, it seems. It's all we do. It's a caveat here, caveat there, caveat here. Oh, and then you wonder why people don't get along. It's, it's just amazing to me. And, and, but anyways, I think the parents, you know, keep showing up for your kids. It, man, I'm telling you, people listen. And it's about time you start doing it. I'm sorry. Stop sending emails and get into your point the canned response because that's all you're going to get until you show up and you start fighting for your kids. You did a fantastic job. Everyone who spoke tonight did a great job. And all your issues, the gentleman with the lock lane, I know you're going to address it. But again, that's the point of doing these. And I'll say this in closing. This is what I'm proud of. And I don't care what it, you can argue with me. We, as a government, the town manager and his staff, and this council, both Republicans and Democrats, for the last year and a half, we have managed our town in a council manager form of government. We have not varied from it. We have kept our, our, our principles to the charter. And we have done exactly what you're supposed to do in a time of crisis. We were transparent, and we held to our line of government. We, we, are, we were back in the chambers in September of last year, and we haven't missed a beat, knock on wood. And so, again, we're adhering to the principles of government in this town. And you have a right to speak up, no matter if you disagree with me or you agree with me. You have a right to speak up as an American. People got to remember that. I know it's hard when people are going to start attacking you. But if we don't start speaking up for what you believe in, this is, going, this is going quick. And I said this last November when they were saying, oh, they're going to tell you how many people you can have in your house for Thanksgiving. I mean, if we're going to allow the government into your home, they're never going to leave, no matter what you believe. And that's what people have to start understanding, what's going on here. It's greater than you know, some of the things where you know, some of these trivial issues we're arguing about. There's stuff going on here that's real, and people got to start waking up and fighting for what they believe in. I don't care if you disagree with me or you agree with me. Thank you for everyone who came out tonight. We need more of it. There should be more people here. Okay, there should be more. Whether even if you're against what other people are saying, that's fine. It's time that people get out, again get out of your house, come to these meetings, whether the Board of Ed Council, whatever, or you know, and start speaking up what you believe in, because it's 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 fleeting. If you haven't learned anything over the last year, time is fleeting, and unfortunately, your freedom is too. And again, government does not grant you your freedom. If you believe that, then we're in big trouble. Thank you, town manager. The mayor likes to say that's a tough act to follow. Well, so you, now, you, you made it hard on me the last three speeches. So I'll say that now. Um, I would just like to also just add in, in regard to the Narcan saves, the mayor is quite right. Our EMS uh, police do a remarkable job, but so do our fire departments. Sorry. They also Fair note, enough. Mr. Mayor, with all due respect, I, I wanted to add in that they are a great and invaluable um, team member in our first responder and public safety team. And they are there uh, with our EMS and uh, police, sometimes before them, uh, saving lives with Narcan as well. So we thank all of those departments for their uh, dedication as well. Uh, in regard to the Everbridge that went out in the early morning hours, um, we probably heard more about that than most other things in the last uh, few months other than masks. Um, but I sent to you, and I'll send it again, the chief of police talked. There's a new personnel that sent it out in error. And uh, as Chief Sfraza knows, our policy is normally not to do it before 5 a.m. Of course, you've got to remember, it's a double-edged sword, as uh, uh, Councilor Susak said. Uh, we actually had a resident call and commend him for sending it out at 1.30 <laughs> and thought it was important enough to do. So you get them on both ends of the spectrum. Uh, but I'll tell you, we do get a lot of criticism when they forget or don't send it out. Normally, that's during the day. But this was an error. The person has been counseled and, at, you know, refreshed on the policy. So hopefully it doesn't happen again. But accidents happen and we can't, we can't um, you know, once the horse has left the barn, we can't uh, change that for that incident. Um, in regard to the hazardous waste, this comes up once in a while uh, to do it more frequently. Just so you understand, that is the prerogative of the council. But you must be um, aware and cognizant of the fact that when we do it, and it's a function of budget, and you can, you'll have to, uh, 
decide if you want to increase it. But for each time we do it, the fee for the, the company to come out uh, is $1,500. Our disposal costs for the last one, for instance, were $15,000. We have six personnel of overtime, which is about $1,800, and we have to have a police officer for traffic. So it's about $20,000 every day you do it. So if you want to do it monthly, you're going to have to allocate yeah, $240,000 or however many times you want to do it. It's a very I expensive uh, undertaking, but that's always been the impediment. But certainly if council desires it more frequently, let us know and um, we can make the transfer from the general fund and fund it. But that's the cost of it. Um, in regard to, and unfortunately he left, but in regard to Homestead and the, the basin and the pictures that were shown, or Mr. Janais, we've reviewed this several times with him, and Public Works has looked at it. Uh, this area is a retention basin. Its function is to retain the water from that whole subdivision, and then it percolates and it goes into the drainage system. It's designed to do what it's doing. Um, I don't know what more to tell you. We can't change that. That was approved by planning and zoning as it is. And in regard to cleaning it out, uh, along with 42 other sites, our DPW, when we have uh, rain events predicted, they go out and make sure it's clear, and they do that there as well. And we've checked in the past, and we can find no order of planning and zoning that it should be mowed. Doesn't exist. So if Mr. Genitis has that, he could supply it to us. But it works as it is. Some areas are wet, and we've communicated that. And as we say, you know, I, I don't know how many, no matter how many times the question is asked, that's the reality of the situation. Uh, again, Mr. Nunes has met with him and staff has. We always respond to people and their complaints, but it's working as it was supposed to and as it was designed to and as it was approved to. So that's the answer there, and we've looked at it and, and talked to him so, uh, at least a couple of times while I've been here about it. Which leads me to Lock uh, Street and Mr. Meyer, 94 years old. Yeah, God did, bless him. did a great job. I mean, My dad said, you know, when he, if he lived long enough to get old, he was going to go. He told me, Chris, I'm going to go and give him hell. <laughs> and so God bless Mr. Myers. But I will tell you, um, we have looked into Lock uh, several times. He did call three weeks ago and ask for me, and what I do is I try to find out who the expert in the area is, and in our office with Blight, it's Deb McCarthy, because we work with the Blight officers. She does then all the mailings, and so she keeps the file. So she's spoken to him every week for the last week. I didn't know he still wanted to talk to me. I, w I would have reached out. She gave him all the information. What I can tell you is, in this circumstance, the Blight ordinance is working perfectly. We have over $78,000 in fines on the property for all of the offenses that he's described over the last two years. But as you know, uh, the court system basically shut down during COVID. Uh, not only were we, and it's been referred to the town attorney's office because we have outside counsel, this council has authorized the use of outside attorneys. When fines reach that threshold amount, we go to foreclose on the property. This is in the town attorney's office. What the council has done, every single one of you, including Joe Bosco, is you authorized a top 10 property list and, and spent and invested hundreds of thousands of dollars. We've cleaned them all up. We've added new ones to the list of which this is one. But there's a bank foreclosure on that property right now. There was a court date today to sell the property. And if the property then is sold, our lien will be paid to us and the property will be ordered clean. We can't work any faster than the court system. We've done everything humanly possible, and that has been communicated to him. And perhaps, he, you know, he's a proud man. I remember as a new younger man, a town attorney, he was on the Planning and Zoning Commission. He's a volunteer. He's worked for this community. He's earned uh, the right to come and speak and expect results. But the Blight Ordinance has worked, and I would mention, when he's complimenting the Blight Committee, that's the committee I put together, the Blight officers he's commending are the three Blight officers that you funded when we didn't have any and you funded two more, so we have three. We've also been successful in tearing down under the Blight uh, Ordinance and Committee six properties in Thompsonville alone. It's working, and it's working well. We've raised and we have a lot of funds and a lot of liens, but again, we can't tell the court system what they can do and at what time frame. But it is moving forward, and I can't tell them any more than Deb's told them each week. She told them where, where we were at, told them it's in our Blight Committee, uh, told them uh, that it's in the town attorney's office, but I think obviously he's he's earned the right to be impatient. Right. So hopefully he'll look at this. Deb will communicate with him again. If he still would like to speak with me personally, I'd rather speak with Debbie. Um, I'll give him a call back to him. 
But that's the. And it's not just that property too. There's other ones. Um, yeah, you know, I'm thinking of Debbie Lane, which is another one we sent to the lawyer. We, about we're going to do an update. We've had a, yeah. a miraculous right. success. Right. We have many of them in foreclosure. They were only stalled because the court system right. came to a halt. Most of them are going to be taken, rehabbed, and our blight ordinance is a success story. And the council, this council, gets credit for it. So. Sometimes when you're living at it and you're looking every day uh, and it doesn't get cleaned up. And again, we can't do clean and lean. We can't go in and cut the lawn on a, an inhabited property. It's only vacant. So our hands are tied. We, we've looked at this and we've left no stone unturned and we've given it great attention. But it is a success story, but not when you live across the street from it and look at it every day. All right. No, fair, fair. I think that was all the matters. Any that questions from, for the town manager? Thank you, sir. We move on to item 10, Town Attorney Report. No report tonight. <laughs> we figured you would want to give something. All right, got it. <laughs> Any questions for the relief pitcher? No, thank you, sir. Uh, item, item 11, uh, report of any special committees? I uh, do. Councilor Muller? I got some great highlights from JFK. Uh, they're actively getting ready to turn over Area G, uh, White Wing, Area B, Music and Arts Wing, and Area C, Cafe and Gym for the start of school. That's great news. Uh, Area H, Red Wing, will not be occupied in the fall due to the construction activities they're going to do. Uh, the temporary portable classrooms outside of Red Wing have finally been demolished and removed. That's great news. North parking lot will be paved in the upcoming weeks, so that'll be ready for the start of school as well. And furniture and AV equipment installation is ongoing during the next month. Thank you. Any other reports of any special committees of the town? Hearing none, we move on to item uh, 13. New uh, I just want to say on a positive note, I wanted to commend Officer uh, Michael Emmons. He was promoted to sergeant and also commend Sergeant Held, who was promoted to lieutenant. So our police department, there's good things that are happening. We also had two ribbon cutting ceremonies in Enfield, the water pollution control, which went really well. They had a nice ceremony and also a Dunkin Donuts up on Route 5 on uh, North Enfield Street. So congratulations to them. Moving on to item 12, old business. Item 12A stays on the table. Item 12B still on the table, Chris? Yeah. Or so we move to item 13, new business. Item A, consent agenda. Uh, again, there is none. Item 13B, appointments by the town council. There are none. Item 13C, town manager count appointed, council approved. There are none. Top of page two, item D, appointments, P and Z commission appointed, council approved. Again, there are none. I, I, we move to item 14, items for discussion. The consent agenda A1 through 5 has been moved to miscellaneous. Item B1 has been moved to miscellaneous. Item under, item under items for discussion, item C, appointments by the town manager, council approved, there are none. Item D, appointments by the PNZ commission appointed, council approved, there are none. Item E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, uh, I'm sorry, M, N, O, P, and Q have all been moved to miscellaneous. We move to item 15 miscellaneous item a1 through a5 um again a consent agenda request to transfer funds a1 for youth and family services of 750. item two request to transfer funds for the library for 3,000. item three resolution authorizing the town manager to sign an application for and enter an agreement with the connecticut department of children and families for youth borough service bureau and enhancement act Item four, resolution authorizing the town manager to sign grant application and enter an agreement with the Connecticut Department of Transportation for dial ride and magic carpet. Item five, resolution authorizing the manager to sign grant applications to enter with Amplify Inc. for youth and family services. Um, being on a consent agenda, Chris, anything quick, highlights, or are we good? Hearing none, um, by show of hands, items A1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. All those in favor, by show of hands. Opposed, abstention, 10 in favor, Sheila, zero against. Under miscellaneous, item B1, appointments by the town council, planning and zoning commission alternate. Do I have a nomination, please? Councilor Mangini. I'd like to nominate Karan Majumar. Nomination made. Seconded okay. by Councilor Riley to have a motion to close nominations. So moved. By Councilor Riley, seconded by Deputy Mayor Suzak. All those in favor of closing nominations by show of hands. Opposed, abstentions. We have 10 in favor, zero against. Any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Hemler? Four. 
Mayor Ludwick? Four. Councilor Mangini? Karan Majumar. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Karan Majumar. That's 10 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item E, under miscellaneous, request to transfer funds for CARA, also known as the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovering Act grant of $50,000. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. To the, I'm going to say CARA, the CARE grant of $50,000 from the CRAC grant of $50,000. Certify that the above funds are available on J July 23rd, 2021, by John Wilcox, our Director of Finance, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. By Councillor Muller, Second. by Councillor Riley. Pretty straightforward, but I mean, go right ahead. Uh, yeah. Cindy Guerrero is on vacation. This money has already been awarded, the grant money, but on the uh, advice of the, the uh, finance director, it's a five-year grant for ENF. It's the same proposition. So if we have unspent money, instead of coming back every year to say, carry it over for the next year, this will do it for the five years during the grant. So we don't have to come back every year if money's left and say, can we carry it over? So that's the purpose of it. That's both for ENF. And this goes to the Enfield Together Coalition for a drug-free community. $50,000. Yeah, as I said, it's nothing to do with the grants. We've right. already gotten them. It's just to carry over unspent yeah. money from year to year. Yeah. Any discussion on the motion? Heard on roll call, please. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Councilor Suzek. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item F under uh, miscellaneous. Discussion resolution authorizing the transfer of unspent funds for the CARA, also the Comprehensive Addic Addiction and Recovery Act grant, whereas the Town of Enfield has, award has been awarded a grant under the Comprehensive Addiction Recovery Act, whereas the grant specifies how the grant fund should be spent, whereas the grant allows unspent funds from one grant year to be carried forward into the next grant year. Be it there hereby resolved, be it hereby resolved, unspent fund in any of the grant accounts at the end of the each fiscal year shall be reappointed to the same general ledger account in the next fiscal year. Submitted on July 27, 2021, by our social services director, Cindy Guerrero. Oh, Account Deputy Mayor Suzak, seconded by Councillor Muller. You just gave the explanation. Correct, just yep. to carry over the grant money from year to year during the five year pendency of the grant. Yep. Any other further questions or discussion? Hearing on roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzek. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. That's 10 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you. Moving on to item G, discussion resolution, request to transfer funds for remodeling of Alcorn Building of $64,705.90. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section A after the Town Charter. The following transfer is hereby made. To the Capital non recurring Fund of $64,705.90 from the Capital non recurring Fund of the Enfield Express Remodel Services of $64,705.90. Certified the above funds are available as of July 19, 2020 by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our Town Manager, Chris Bromson. Second. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Riley. This money has already been funded within the building consolidation plan. Um, we've moved it around a little bit depending on need. We had less of a need at the Enfield Express where it was budgeted, but we do have a need because the HVAC bid came in a little higher at Alcorn. So this is where it's going. Um, they're very close to completion. Uh, Public Works has done a beautiful job. We can't wait to give you a tour when that's done and recreation and social services move in. It's going to be a facility to be proud of, but that's what this is for. And speaking of an older building or refurbishing, this is a beautiful old building that, if you're right, hopefully we'll be able to let the public, maybe some pictures for the public, because it looks great. Absolutely. Yeah. Any questions for the town manager? Hearing on roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item H under the miscellaneous discussion resolution to approve a three-year collective bargaining agreement with IAEP local number RI-717-NAGESEIU 
Resolve the Enfield Town Council does hereby approve the three year collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Enfield and the IAEP local number R1 717 NAGE SEIU paramedics and EMT union dated July 1, 2020, 2021 through June 30th, 2024, submitted by Steve Belinda on July 20th, 2021, our director, our human resource director. So moved. By Councillor Mangini, seconded by Councillor Muller. You want. Steve, Steve Belinda can come up if there are questions, but all of the next items yep. all revolve around this three-year contract and its ratification. But Steve can come up to answer any questions or present. Um, he's always prepared, so perhaps you'd like to Maybe give a little title overview. For the, for the record, please. Steve Belinda, Director of Human Resources for the Town of Enfield. Um, I'll present uh, briefly. Uh, earlier tonight, you heard uh, Town Manager Chris Bromson discuss um, the proposed uh, public safety complex to enhance the police department and provide new infrastructure for the EMS uh, Services Department. But then it also makes sense that he also impresses upon increasing the, uh, the salary level for the paramedics and the EMTs who will be occupying this building. That's the second part of the equation, not only infrastructure, but you need the human resources to go into this building. And um, that's why he was as vocal as he was that uh, we need to settle this contract because um, we were losing people uh, left and right to competitors, poachers out there. Uh, there's a national shortage for EMTs and paramedics, as I discussed earlier with you, and we're losing people to Target. So that we can't sustain a paramedic and EMT department um, with those uh, stats. So um, that's why I'm here tonight, and I have the uh, Chief Rigger here tonight, too, to, to impress upon you to please consider passing this contract, because um, we do have a tentative agreement, uh, thanks in part to what you guys impressed upon us, and the buzz is already out there. People, I think, want to come work here now. She's getting applications that we've never seen before. Um, we, we want to be a magnet. We don't want to just be mediocre. We want people that want to come here and work here, and preferably in a new state-of-the-art public safety complex, too. Any one of us, any given moment, may rely on that service just driving home today. So um, it, it's, it's, it's beneficial that this town can boast having a state-of-the-art public safety complex with state-of-the-art employees that want to come here and work. I and think, then, Mary, it, it's to harken back what you said earlier, it's a very good example of how well the town manager, town council form of government uh, can work and does work in this town. Uh, the staff researches, I then advocate, and you, you adopt the policy. And I think the council, you, you've known we're, we're a conservative council. We, you know, we negotiate fairly, but we negotiate uh, with tough love with all of our unions, and we have given the fiscal realities of the past. But council, I think, came to a recognition upon hearing the facts that you know we were well underwater with the salaries. Uh, it wasn't commensurate with the top rate superior service that we offer to, from our EMS to our residents. It is unparalleled in the state. Again, it's a testament to EMS, but also because of the partnership with fire and police. It's a triad, and all three of them contribute to make that the strongest in the state. It's recognized as such. We've been recognized by hospitals. And you heard Doug Finger earlier, uh, apropos uh, of the service, talk about uh, how much he appreciated it and the job they do. I hear that all the time, and we pass those accolades on from our residents. Wasn't like that 15 years ago when I was charged with, okay, let's do a new EMS service. Uh, the police department had always done it. We had to take it over, and they've really come full circle. So I think, as um, Steve said, we had hoped, just with word getting out, that we were now going to be, and we're not going to the top of the pay scale. We're going to be in the middle, but we'll be competitive. We're hoping to bring back some very fine paramedics that didn't want to leave us but couldn't afford to stay. And it's good to hear from Aaron and from Steve that it's working. So I urge you to ratify it. It's a recognition of you. I know how highly all of you feel about the EMS services especially. Um, and I'm, I mean this, the word. You don't really hear it. Heroism, sacrifice. That's what our EMS did. Uh, our police to and fire uh, throughout the pandemic. They showed up. They were on the front lines. And I have to tell you, uh, it was devastating uh, personally to the EMS family. Um, we had over 60% that contracted COVID. Um, and as soon as they were able, they came back and they got back in those rigs. And they got back and they went in knowing that the people they were transporting were seriously ill. And they came and they did it every day and they backed up other communities. It was really a remarkable uh, show. And I think this is commensurate and, and shows that we appreciate that. We want to keep them. We want to be able to retain our people and also attract other people to be the best service in the state. And I know they're excited, as we all are, about the public safety complex. And again, that's the council's doing. You bought 
bought the land. If you build it, Gina will like this, they will come. The governor put $12.8 million towards it. And as the mayor said, we're gonna hopefully build it, pass it in the referendum. Over 84% will be paid by the state and it'll be a real uh, example of regional uh, cooperation between our area towns. And it'll be a real testament to this council and to our services that staff it. So we urge you to support this as part of your larger plan. So, Chief Rigger, would you like anything you want? To, I mean, you want to make sure you're here. You have, you're welcome to come up to the floor if that's all with you folks. I want to make sure you have a chance. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks. No, we we have excellent people, and we want to keep them. And I think um, the the market just outran us, and we needed to do some catch up. We've lost really good people that wanted to stay here, but they needed to make decisions for their families and they you know they chose to go elsewhere we're hoping that some will come back um, in the past i'd say two weeks we've gotten more applications than we've gotten in the past six months because word of mouth we're a small community um, the ems folks in connecticut so we're starting to see people actually you know want to work here which is which is great so thank you for considering thank you Anyone have any questions for Steve or Chief Riggett? No, I'll just say you, you, you're a fantastic chief. You've done a great job with this department, as Thank we you. chatted a little bit earlier. And you're genuine, you're honest, and I think most people are never going to know the sacrifice your team made during this whole process. So I, we certainly witnessed, the manager had said, and again, you folks came right back to work. I mean, it's, I mean, may imagine just coming to work is a great, I mean, it's, it's a great thing. So again, I, I appreciate every, you're, you're again, you're doing a great job, Chief. And um, I think it's a testament that the council is so, you know, really right behind you on this. Thanks. I think it's to your leadership. Anyone else have any comments? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. It's 10 in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. You guys can stay there. I don't know if I have any questions, but you guys get the floor. Um, an item I discuss from resolution request to transfer funds for collective bargaining agreement with IAEP local number R1, excuse me, RI 717 NAGE SEIU, $294,414. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section AF of the Town Charter. The following transfer is hereby made. From the general fund, of $294,414 from the uh, general revenue uh, account on allocated charges to the emergency medical service fund, EMS revenue general fund transfer of $294,414. Certified the above funds are available as of July 23rd, 2020 by our director of finance, John Wilcox, and approved by our town manager, Chris Bromson. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Mangini. Uh, we just discussed any questions for Chris or Chief Frigate? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councilor Bosco. Four. Councilor Sakala. Four. Ten in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. We move on to item J under miscellaneous discussion resolution amending the non union wages in the EMS department. Uh, resolved in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby amend the wages in accordance with the proposed salary spreadsheet on Exhibit A, submitted on July 20, 2021, by Steve Belinda, our Human Resource Director. Almost. By Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Mangini. Again, yeah, unless there's anything, yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, this is just a second part of the equation. I'm. Uh, uh, because we passed a contract and there's increases in that contract, well, now for the non-union, some of them will be upside down as far as right. wages, and, and that's demoralizing to say the least. So um, we need to make the, the, them right in the same aspect as we did. So basically them. keeping the chain of command of salaries. Yeah. Right. Right. We learned yeah. this, uh, and yeah. Council Bosco had made the uh, observation during the police. We, we didn't do it. We had to come back later to address right. the, the disparity. So this time we were sure we brought it to you to say, let's do it all in one fell. So fully transparent with everything. Right, and we're doing it up front, so we're not penalizing anyone for actually staying here, which is Correct. good. <laughs> Any other questions? Roll call, please. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. 
Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. It's ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item K under miscellaneous discussion resolution request to transfer funds for EMS of $94,509. Resolved in accordance with Chapter uh, 7, Section 8F of the, sorry, excuse me, Chapter 6, excuse me, Section 8F of the Town Charter. The following transfer is hereby made from the General Fund, General Fund Revenues Appropriate Fund Balance of $94,509 to the Emergency uh, Medical Service Fund of EMS Revenue General Fund Transfers in of $94,509. Certify the above funds are available as of July 23rd, 2020 by John Wilcox and approve our Director of Finance and approved by Chris Bromson, our Town Manager. Councilor Muller? Second. By Councilor Mangini. And straightforward, we're just funding what we just, what we just approved. Yep. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Muller? Four. Councilor Riley? Four. Councilor Sapraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Four. Councilor Bosco? Four. Councilor Sakala? Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Well done, and thank you. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Moving on to item L under miscellaneous Resolu discussion resolution adopting the revised solid waste ordinance. Whereas the volume of municipal solid waste produced in the town of Enfield and the cost of disposal have been increasing at a significant rate. Whereas the rate of re recycling as percentage of total waste has been declining. And whereas the, en the Enfield Department of Public Works has drafted a revised municipal solid waste ordinance, which is intended to control cost and increase recycling. Whereas the ordinance has been reviewed and revised in the input of the Public Works Subcommittee of the Town Council. And whereas at the public hearing conducted on August 2nd, 2021, the residents of the town of Enfield had the opportunity to ask questions of town staff and make comments to the town council regarding the proposal or ordinance. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council hereby approve and adopt the attached municipal solid waste ordinance effective November 1, 2021, to allow the pu for public education and implementation, prepared on July 27, 2020, by the Department of Public Works. So moved. By Councillor Mangini, seconded by Councillor Muller. So, so Donald, do you want to come up, or because I'll turn it over just in case. Yeah. yeah he's, he's tough. People don't realize you're toughing it out coming up here, too, by the way, for the record. All right. Uh, Donald, yeah. Noon, Donald Noon's Director of Public Works. Councillor Bosco. Okay. Just a little history on this. I probably said it about 100 times, but um, this all came about with the price of getting rid of trash. And uh, one of the big things throughout the campaign that I've always heard uh, the 14 years I've been doing it is we need to privatize trash. We need to privatize trash. So we went out and we sent the staff out and they checked what other towns about our size were doing with trash. And um, the cost to process the trash really was about what Enfield's is paying now it was just a tad bit more but we also get a lot more services out of our employees because they're all cross-trained and they can use them for different things so the price was good for for labor and, and equipment where we found there was a problem was the amount of tonnage going out was a lot less so uh, at that point there we why well one of them is they're doing a little bit better on recycling the second one was they're limited to one trash barrel, and if you get a second trash barrel, you have to pay. So that's where the discussion all came from. And uh, Councilor Mangini, Suzak, and I, we spent all countless hours trying to do this with staff to come up with what is the fairest, best, most uh, transparent way of doing this and that's when it came down you're gonna get one tipper barrel and you'll be able to purchase other tipper barrels so right now I guess we'll we'll work on the price up and policy but um, right now as it's written there were a few things that we had questions on so I want to try to try to uh, answer as many of them as possible one was I got a call from a related a resident because he said we were picking up weekly so I just talked to Donald and that's gonna have to be a change we have to do because it says weekly in there but really it is weekly but not really because we do a and B each week so we're, we're, you know we're not gonna be able to vote on that till we change at least that um, I had uh, one person uh, they 
we're questioning the uh, some of the language where you can't go pick recyclables or trash. Uh, that's been in there ever since. Fines, there's been fines there since the beginning of this ordinance. It's just that they're a little more in line with today. Um, the placement of the tipper barrels, we have to start somewhere. Uh, I know in our meeting we are talking about, the, you know, we understand you're not going to be able to put three feet around each one of them in every location. So, you know, that, I, I guess we're going to have a mechanism that that can be addressed. It's the same thing where I can put it on the, on the grass or in my driveway or on the side of the road. You know, there, there's got to be some leeway. It just can't be black and white. Um, the... Uh, what was the other one he had? I can't believe I can't remember. Oh, oh, the yard waste will address on the other one. Um, so anyway, this mainly you'll see a lot of changing. It was just mostly new definitions, getting the ordinance to match. You know what what we're doing today, and. Uh, and the big the big change out of this again is going to be you're going to have one tipper barrel you'll have to pay for is there the maximum, other ones maximum of tip, tipper barrels i believe the maximum was three right yeah i believe the maximum was three and what you'll be doing is you'll be buying tags what about multi-families multi-families are two per unit got it okay and what's going to happen is you're, you're going to be able to, for the extra ones you're going to be able to buy tags now it's not as bad because we, we also put a provision in there for uh, high volume, you know, Christmas, Memorial Day, you know, the big holidays where people make more trash, you'll be able to use your, your other tipper barrels without, without a charge. So we think we got everything. Uh, I guess the big question is, are you guys happy with the fines? Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss the, the amounts. Uh, placement of the barrels you know that's all the little things that that we addressed but staff put a lot of time in this to make sure that we were trying to be as fair as possible trash is going to go crazy i mean it could be 135 dollars a ton and if we don't start doing something now also we didn't want to um harm the businesses that are already getting trash so what they're going to do is they're going to still get one trash barrel because there's places that they just can't put dumpsters. So they'll be able to get rid of their trash, but um, they will be paying a higher amount for the second and the third uh, tipper barrel. So that's about all I can say of that. And um, if anyone else has anything to say. Donald, you want, before, just want to yeah, make sure. Yeah, if I could address yeah, that. Go um, ahead. The first thing that Councilor Bosco said on page 8 of 12. You then, then Cindy. You guys okay. go, go, you guys first. Thank you. So page 8 of 12, item B, recyclables. And if Attorney Serrato can get to that page too. It says one ninety-six gallon blue barrel will be collected per week at no charge. It's really, I don't know if that warrants uh, a chain or an amendment or I don't know, you know again if you can, you can do that there but again we only pick up once per year you know if you're a week or b week so yeah that, i think we got to be clear on that i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry i mean it's yes it's bad. but so i'm saying so i yeah i, I didn't so so that fair point so okay fair i think that has to be changed but a gal you know, I mean, you, I mean, you know, as I did, it took you guys three years to put this together. You guys worked hard <laughs> on this. I mean, four years from now, we're not going to know the interpretation. You're going to read it, right? I mean, I agree. Let's get it clean up front. I know you put all this work into it. Let's make sure it's crystal yeah. clear. That's my opinion. Yeah. You, you did all the work. Maybe when people start recycling more, we'll have to go weekly. So, you, you okay? Deputy yes, Mayor sir. Suzak and Councilor Mangini. Yeah. I, Council Riley. Right. I just got one comment, and it was like, you know, four paragraphs, but the main gist of this is who will enforce the fines and how will we collect them? That is a work in progress, to be 100%. To be it's, it's, it's a it's work a, in progress. That's it's a right. Work, it's an absolute work and, in progress. And, we, and also, you know, clarification is that we want the barrels full. We want the lid closed. If the wind blows the lid open, that that doesn't constitute a uh, violation. Right. It's when this trash is flowing out right. over it. 
you need to be going and getting the second barrel. Our drivers are very skilled on their routes, and they know they know their the residents that push those limits at times, and they, they know which ones, and the, you know, so I, I have every faith We've in. Probably in our, all been known to do that. <laughs> I have every faith in my in the in our, in our and, staff. And for the record, Council right. Bosco, Deputy Mayor Suzak, and Council Mayor Jeannie has spent a tremendous amount of time working on this, and they've, I mean, it's been. I, and of course, with your staff. So I mean, I, I, just people I know they only see us in the council. But those folks have worked on this for for a while. I mean, I don't know. You guys do the. I know it's been a long time. Councilor Mangini, you have the floor, so I apologize. Oh, I just have a question. And just for clarification, on the bulky waste transfer station fees, is this an appropriate time to ask a question about this, Next. or should I wait? Next one, Cindy. Next one. Okay. All right. Councilor Riley, Councilor Ungar, and Councilor Sakala. Um, I know. Um, I got the same email uh, Mr. Bosco got, and there were questions regarding if you were a landlord, and there were violations um, that it is unfair to the landlord who has to pay if one of his residents puts items in there that's not supposed to be there, or you know they weren't three feet apart or whatever. But um, I guess if we can get some sort of clarification on that. I don't know, we, but I'm going to go see that We did that talk guy, about so. that, Charlotte. And okay. I mean, sometimes it behooves us as landlords to put that in the lease. Yeah. Just like you tell them that they can't, you know, do illegal activities, mm -hmm. that if they don't follow the rules and regulations, that it is beyond the onus to them to pay the fines. But the other thing on this is the first ordinance was drafted, what, like 2000 or something like that? I mean, it's been a long time. Yeah. The same rules applied. The only difference is the fines are a little more. So all the rules in, in, on the fines and stuff been there since the adoption of the first ordinance, and and it's and it's in here. It's just that the fines were increased a little bit right. to meet more of today's thing. So if he wasn't getting fined before, you're not going to probably get fined. Right, because nothing's changed with nothing's that nothing's changed exactly. other than the amount. Correct. Well, we might start well, yeah, I guess if I think that's the thing is we have not been enforcing and that's that's what my citizen here is saying. We're not enforcing. How are we going to enforce? And Charlotte's asking who's going to pay it when we do enforce because we do have to start enforcing because, you know, we got barrels out there that, you know, they've been out there for 20 years, probably since it, since it rolled up in front, they've left it in the front of the street and. Mm. That's where it stays. Councilor Ungar, then Councilor Sakal, mm -hmm. then Councilor Sparazza. Uh, with the yard waste, the brown barrels, uh, I read that it's unlimited for your spring cleanup and your fall cleanup. Is there a way you're going to define when that starts and stops? And can we still get tags to put on a gray barrel if it's limitless during that designated time? Yeah, I think we're gonna, we were planning on getting rid of the tag system for that. I will defer uh, with. DBW will define the dates of those pickups, the you know the extra the extra pickups for trash, and also for the for the spring and fall cleanups. We'll define those dates, so you still be able to have the 40 bags plus your things like that. So we're still going to continue that, but we'll def we'll define those dates okay. with council. Council Sakala, then Council Sparaza. Thank you. I have a couple of things. Um, what are you going to do, or what about grandfathering people in? You want to take that, Councilor? What so, do you mean by grandfather? Let, let's say they have five grade tipper barrels at their well, house. Well, if they got, if they, they can buy three tags, yeah, they buy and they tag. can, and they can use that second tipper barrel, or I guess if they probably need that third tipper barrel on Labor Day, they can use them. But after that, you're you're still going to be stuck with three barrels max and Two barrels at their house they can't yep, use. Yep, and then they can buy the tag. Yeah. And they can and they can always sell the other barrel on marketplace, I guess. Yep. Someone will I, buy I, it. I guess. I, I mean, I, I'm not really sure that. Well, we have. I'm we not have, sure that there, if there shouldn't be language in here about that. We okay. well, that would defeat the purpose of this whole uh, ordinance. We have one person that puts out 13 tipper barrels at their house. Okay. So if we grandfather them, we're going to allow them to do 13 tipper barrels. A lot of these, a lot of these people that have a real lot okay. of uh, um, tipper barrels. Let me finish first. What's that? Let me finish. If that's all right. Yeah. Okay. So 
my second question is, or second comment would be um, on page 12, we say that um, the tipper barrels would be purchased at a fee established by the director. Um, is that going to be a fluid fee? So this ordinance say, I think there should be some language. My suggestion would be about what the director is going to base that off of, whether it's going to be, I know Councilor Mangini said something about cost neutral, and I think that Donna, you had said something about that as well. That number is not going to be the same, whether what, it's next year or six years. What we now. discussed is, and it'll probably be done in a policy, is um, cost neutral. So right now, I think it's $85 it costs us for that second tipper barrel. So it'll be cost, it, whatever it is, we'll make sure it's worded cost neutral. You know, when, the, when the tipping fees go up, it's going to go up. If the tipping fees go down, it'll come down, but it's going to be at a cost neutral, at least for the residents. The, the businesses will be paying more because they could go get a dumpster. Um, all right, and on page eight, um, and I just may not be understanding this, but so a multifamily house, they can get up to four multifamilies? They can have, get up to four barrels or yeah, four get, tags, get, I should say. So I guess my one concern with that is you have some multifamily housing, I think, down in some areas that are more than four families. Um, I, don't, I don't know if maxing them on four is going to be fair. Well, if I'm not mistaken, we, when we ended up doing that, they'll be able to, the four family will be able to buy an extra tipper barrel. The, the landlord will have to pay for that tipper barrel, and he can get, get. Uh, I think it was a maximum of four more, right? I think it was total of four more, I believe I we thought, did. I thought, okay, so this one says, the, 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 well, the, hang on, so 3A1, or I, says three, it's basically three per house, a single family. Right. And then two says a maximum of one additional gray barrel for a multifamily. And then they were allowed, I believe, to buy one more after that. At least okay. that's where. Okay, is that put somewhere? But then it says in that same number two, or yeah, number two is no more than a total of two gray tipper barrels per unit in a multifamily. So, I right. mean, I don't know if you're So that they'll be able to buy, to they, they, they get one for free, four? so they would get four. Yep. And the landlord could buy one additional. So that would be a four five. family would be a total. Yeah. Of five. I mean, I don't know off the top of my head or if there are six or eight family homes. Those are commercial. Um, they, even in a eight, multifamily. Right? I, I mean, yeah. I know that when, I mean, on the loan review committee, I know we, we spent a long time on that. that is, is it, is it, I don't at, at a minimum, is it, four to, right. I want to say there's right. six. So we said eight. after yeah, that's four right. was that's commercial, what I thought. and it has to go under the commercial guidelines. The, the four family get eight barrels. Okay. But, okay. but four family four, get a total of eight barrels. Four family, Sheena, we considered commercial, and that's... Personally, okay. I considered commercial if you rent property, but yeah. <laughs> I lost that battle. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy's twisted my arm to four. <laughs> I mean, I don't love this, but to be honest, I really didn't get this version until today, so I'd like more time to go yeah, through I it. Yeah, I think we're going to discuss it tonight, unless we'll wait till the next meeting. Yeah, I agree. You know, fair, fair point. I know we just got the red line version. Well, Sorry? actually, there are two different versions. The red line and the highlighted are not the same, which would be super one convenient the if they were one, one document. Yeah. <laughs> All set? Um, Good, thank you. Councilor Sraza. Uh, one thing, Donald, you mentioned, and Donna hit on it too, um, the enforcement. You said it's a work in progress. Right. Um, you know, when I was with the town, we had other things like sidewalk shoveling and I think we got to be clear who's going to enforce this. And secondly, more importantly, is there going to be a hearing officer when people want to appeal? Where's the appeal process? Yeah, we, I have not got that far yet. Again, this is for... And I would defer certainly to the town attorney, but I think under, yeah, when you're under, issued a town ticket, you have yeah. the right. I know you do for the 
uh, snow ban and you know we have an appeals officer I don't know if it would cover this but if we don't nail down the enforcement part then it's not going to be fair yeah I have ideas on, and I was talking with Ken about how to get people you know how to get our staff out there and, and to check it you know to do things other than relying on C click fix or from residents or from concerns from right. counselors right and that I second have, part too is important too when a person wants to appeal it where do they go there is a procedure in there it's the statutory Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Chris. I'm, He's new with the I'm new public with this. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the same. It's the same process we have with the property maintenance liens. There's a hearing officer appoint that I think the town manager appoints the hearing officer. So they'll be taking care the, of yeah, these things too. It's all statutory. Okay. Yes. I know you're going to have some spare time. No. <laughs> <laughs> so before I go, before I go, before I go a second time, for me, I can find. I'm not a fa I'm never in favor of increasing. I get the whole thing, with, but I look at it a different perspective with fines. If we really have a problem, you know, then the fines are, you know, like you said, it's it's based on if we have a problem, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't have a problem, maybe we don't know we have a problem currently, then uh, for me, leave the fines the way they are. But if we do have a problem, then it justifies maybe, again, having a little more of a stick approach. I guess that's my take on fines. I, again, I'm just not a fan of fines. Yeah. But that's just my, and then the second thing, I know we chat, Again, I would love, I mean, again, it's just speaking for me. I would love, like, as we talked a little bit back when we did this in the spring of this year, before we charge people the second, uh, you know, for the second barrel, again, I would like to see at least give residents a chance to recycle more. So some sort of program, I mean, I, I guess, you know, like I said, we chat about, it's nice to see some programs we try to bring people together on doing for a common goal. If the common goal is, look, if we don't recycle more, 85 bucks a ton is going to turn into 135 bucks a ton by 2022 or whatever it's going to be. You know, the, the individual in the audience is right. You know, that that trash is going to be shipped out of state as of today at some point, and that that cost goes up as we know exponentially. Why we're doing this? So I guess just my request for other for the committee members, I, I would like to say, give us a year. You know, we have find out a, a certain threshold. We need to recycle more. If we don't make it. Next year, you're going to pay whatever the yeah, cost is. So that's just my opinion, because I'd like to see his action. I know you're going to yell at me, but I no, no. I, 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 I think <laughs> for me again, I, I just think I just again, I, I think there's legitimate reasons why some people have a second barrel. But I agree, after that, you should have to pay for it. I think it gets a little out of control at that point. But if you at least push people to try to recycle, and if we don't meet a goal, we don't meet the goal. Then everyone knows what the you know what the outcome will be. That's just my opinion. That's it. And that's not a question for you. Whoever wants to answer, go ahead. I just want to respond. Yeah. I, I have to tell you, when I first met Mayor Ludwig, it was in the 90s, and he kept telling me that municipal trash was the thing. It was on his ordinance back in the Yeah, day. it was the thing of the future, and I, I was there for the Board of Ed and thought, what does this young man care about trash? Well, I'm sitting here, and I'm caring about trash now. You know, Mike, it's not our citizens that's the problem. It's people running businesses, putting out 10 barrels, five barrels consistently. You know, we listen to our staff. Joey and I have been at this for like three years. We're, we, you know, we, know, we are trying to keep it fair. The thing is, is that, you know, you're not going to change their behavior. It's not, it's, I truly, I drive around, I don't see a lot of regular homes with a lot of barrels. I mean, Cindy and, and Joey, they, you know, I wanted anybody, everybody to get one. If you got one tax bill, you got one barrel. That was my, that was my stance. And Donna will tell you, I wanted, you got one tax bill, one barrel. Sorry, that's how it works. And, you know, we, we went to four units and every unit got a, gets a barrel. And, you know, I do, I drive around town and our citizens have a right to complain. Barrels are out there 24 seven. You know, roll your barrels in. You can't walk on sidewalks and everything else. And our staff, you know, they think about what they're doing. Yeah, we're asking for them to strive for three feet apart. We know there's sections of town. We have special trucks. I mean, give us some credit that we know what we're doing. I mean, you know, maybe it'll get people interested in it. You know, if you make it really easy, Mike, 
people we are going to get interested. We can add to our regional public safety. We can do trash. That will be part of our training. Yeah, there trash, you go. Right? But just to say, it's a problem <laughs> nationwide, and we need to we need to address it, and everybody's done a really good job. Right, so. Councilor Bosco, Councilor Mangini, then Councilor Ungar. Go ahead, Dan. Now, to your point, Mike, uh, there's nothing in this thing that really says money. It's, it's going to, if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be a policy. So we could address... You know, uh, 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 you know, if we hit a target, you know, do a, a one year thing. The big thing is, is this was three years in the making. I understand. And, um, you know, uh, changes in this are fine. I, I don't I, I really don't care. This is what, you know, the fines were what other places are doing. And you got to have some type of deterrent. But I, I don't I don't really care about the fines. We could drop them down to 2000 to find that that. That doesn't bother me. It's the, the, the just the general thing of this. So the the price on that second tipper barrel, the grace period, you know, we could say we're gonna do a one year trial that you're only gonna be able to pick up a I'd maximum be, be of three. That, yeah. We do that in a we do that in a um a policy and then it has a time limit and if they don't hit the right. plateau you know, now it's cost neutral. And that's what I'm suggesting. Because once we get the business trash out, we may not be nowhere near where we think we are. But the problem is we have to start somewhere. No, agree. And you're probably not going to get, especially, you know, a, a new council, and it could have different members, to sit down and write an ordinance that's going to get everyone pissed off right. who has 10 different tipper barrels. You know, so... Now is the time when as soon as this gets passed, we will sit down with policy. Actually, you know, we could get the ideas what you have to say pretty quick. I mean, we could start a meeting next week on policy, but you can't make policy till you have an ordinance. So, you know, if we're in general consensus that this ordinance is is good, we may not be ready to vote on it because there's going to be some things we got to change. The rest we can do in policy and and you know maybe the carrot and the stick is the way you know that, but, that's my only beef with it is that that's it but again that you know we can do that in policy okay councilman sorry councilman Jean and councilman Ongar. thank you thank you um councilman bosco i pretty much want to echo what you just said but my thought here is to solicit comments from council to our committee regarding the ordinance number one council and, and people out on the street but they got to have a somewhat quick time to get them to us. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm focusing on council uh, only because our council colleagues are going to be voting on this um, ordinance and policy. So if we can get feedback on the ordinance and then to what you just stated, our subcommittee get together, regroup, and then we create or rework the policy. I think that would be the order to approach Sure, we, this. Could, we could probably even do the policy yep. and the ordinance at the next meeting. Okay. Right, that's a goal for the next meeting. So, Great. so that would yeah. be yeah. one way to approach Policy should be pretty. That'll give yeah. Councilor Zakala's point a month that's to right. review. I think, exactly. again, that gives you a month, and you should be able to make have it ready by September. I agree. We should be voting on this in September. Agree. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Jeannie. Councilor Ungar. Um, I have so many thoughts on all of this. Um, the reason for this new ordinance and to create a new policy is a couple of reasons. One, the cost to get rid of it is going up, and how are we going to deal with it as a community? The other point is that people are abusing the privilege of having our trash picked up. And so I think the people that are abusing it maybe should be paying more. And instead of going from like as many barrels as you want down to one, why couldn't we have two, two, and two, two brown barrels, two blue, two gray, yeah, and, and see how that goes and give that um, a year to try that out. But obviously people are abusing it. Um, but I did a, a ride along with the recycle truck. I think I'm the only person that did that. And for a whole day, and I, most people are recycling, and everybody had one barrel out. Seemed like everyone was doing it, so that's a plus. Um, one question I have is, why do, is it going for the pass from five dollars to twenty? That's the next. That's the next thing. That's the next one. Yes. Next you know, maybe go from five to fifteen or something. That's well, you can bring it up in the next. Okay. okay. Sorry. That's it. Yeah. Sorry, Donald. Anything? Go right ahead, sir. Yeah. To to your point, Mayor Lulick, about um, public education. Be 
Ken is luxuriating in Maine right now, so lucky him for the last few weeks. But we, before that, though, we've had Ken and uh, staff coming out, being ready to have flyers, ready to have PSAs. We're, we're already working on all that public education but, component of it, where they're going to go on, where we're going to do mailers or put them on the website and things like that. So all that is already is is pretty well along. We're not 100% finished, but we're ready to. You you know, know. And just say, I think you deserve to say this. So again, you're being proactive. So again, we can argue some of the details, but to really the larger point I was brought up earlier about the, the cost that we know is going to is coming. So you folks have been working on this for a while. But I mean, so maybe just explain a little bit of that. I mean, you're trying to be proactive to get ahead of what we know is coming. Yep. And, um, and, you know, and so, I mean, those are things that, again, again, we, again, we talked about government being a little bit proactive is a good thing. And we're not just waiting and say, okay, whatever happens, well, we'll have to deal with it, right? Yeah, we got we have one more year on our you know right. on, on the on the trash contract, which is good, and a couple on the recycling. And the current state now, my home city, um, pays about ninety dollars for trash and one hundred and ten dollars for recycling because there's no market for it. A yeah. hundred ten dollars wow. per ton for recycling, and it's mandated by the state of Massachusetts. So, so I, I was talking to the DPW director, and she said. We have to do it. I said, it's what happens if you just start throwing it? They said they inspect them. You know, they, they, the people at the landfills do it all. So, I mean, it's out there. And that's just, and that's what they just got for this year was that. Oh, we're crazy. paying, we're like 550 or six. Again, I, I think it's, just to reiterate, it's, it's, your staff. So it's, 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 it's coming. So yeah. whether it's, you know, a year, like you said, uh, some, some minor details right now, but I think that we have to, it's like an employee to kind of, we got to. We have to do this, unfortunately. And again, and again you, you should be pushing us on policy when you know it's coming. That's yep. again, appreciate that. It's actually how it's supposed to work. Again, Council Bosco, Deputy Mayor Suzak, Council Mangini. Again, fantastic job. All the work you put into it. People don't realize how many hours you have put into this, along with your staff. And so, so here's what we'll do. Um, plan on having this on the agenda. This will stay on our agenda. We'll go to new bit. We'll go to new business for our next meeting, and we'll vote on this with you know hopefully at the meeting in September. We have to table it. Yes. So yeah. So it, basically, just by not motion. taking a vote, it just goes right in. Because well, we have to motion to table. We have to motion to. I motion to table. Okay. Down. Motion by Second. Deputy Mayor Suda, second by Councilor Sakala. All those in favor to table. Opposed abstentions. It'll be tabled to the next meeting. Thank you, sir. You're going to sit there for the next one. Um, so now we move to item M: discussion resolution adopting revised Bulpagi waste transfer station fees. Sorry, one second. Okay. Um, so, oops, sorry. I will get. I apologize, folks. Got a lot of paperwork here. Where is the cost of the p disposal of bulk municipal solid waste collected at the Enfield Town Town of Enfield en Enfield Transfer Station and through the residential bulk pickup program have been increasing at a significant rate? Where is the Enfield Department of Public Works has drafted a revised bulky waste fee schedule, which is intended to control the cost of bulky waste collected in the town? Whereas this schedule has been reviewed, revised, and with the input of the Public Works Subcommittee of the Town Council, whereas at a public hearing conducted on August 2nd, 2021, the residents of the Town of Enfield have had an opportunity to ask questions of the town staff, make comments to the Town Council regarding the proposed schedule. Therefore, be resolved, the Enfield Town Council hereby approve and adopt the attached bulky waste fee schedule prepared on July 26, 2020 by the Department of Public Works. So moved. By Councilor Mangini. Second. Second by Councilor Riley. I'll, down, I'll open up a few first, for, then I'll go sit. No, sit, Councilor Mangini, then Councilor, uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Go ahead, oh, Councilor Mangini. Okay, thank yep. you. Um, just a um, couple of comments. <clears throat> I'm noticing a, a, a relationship here between the annual permit, residential permit from 5 to 20, is the same as the commercial business permit. Is that something that we talked about? That we're, if you want me, I'll explain it. Yeah. Right, yes. Right, so yes. On, you yield the floor for a second, or you have another question? Nope, that was it. All right, so you'll have the floor after this. Councilor Bosco, please explain. Okay, so what we did was um, we made businesses located in Enfield the same as a residential uh, person. So we, we have businesses in town, uh, me, you pay almost $50,000 in taxes, get no services but yet can't go to the dump. So it wasn't really fair. So we increased, for, for m multiple reasons, we increased the price of the dump permit. We brought the dump permit down for the businesses. 
Now what we also did was for, like, let's say you get a contractor uh, working on your house and he has some windows and some shingles and stuff he has to get rid of. Just like Doug says, it's very expensive to go to um, you know, the, the uh, transfer station uh, at our, our, our contractor. So right now, that contractor, and, and you know what? It's still a pretty, um, a pretty tough market. People are out there to try to save every penny they can because everyone wants every job they can get. So now what will happen is if you get a roof put on your house, I already pay taxes in the town of Enfield. Why should I have to pay another place, you know, to a dumpster or whatever to take just a small load of shingles. So now what will happen is the contractor from out of town will buy a one day permit at $25. And then with, with a copy of your building permit, he now can go to the transfer station, show that there was a building permit and where these shingles came from, and then go dump them for the fee. Because at least that gives everyone, why should, if you, know, if you have a little job, pay to have uh, USA or, or one of the other contractors come bring a big dumpster in front of your house, you're paying where the contractor could just put a half a load of shingles in the back of his pickup and go to the dump with them. So that was that, was that part. Um, the other thing with the price, we tried to be fair. Now, $5 is really pretty cheap to do it. If we do, you know, uh, Doug brought up some real good points. But the thing is, I would rather pay more, a little more for that permit and go dump my brush for free because the first time I go in there to get rid of a tree in my yard, I'm well over the $20 for the permit if we start charging for yard waste. And then why would I want to bring my yard waste to the, to the transfer station I'm going to stick it in brown tipper barrels out in front and have the town come pick it up. So you got to make it somewhat reasonable for people. And I, I think that $20, you know, as we discussed, was a very fair fee. Um, they're getting a bargain by not uh, going to, uh, to, you know, to bring their, their yard waste somewhere and they have a place to get rid of it so it's not brought, dumped on the corner lot. Uh, on the yard waste, if I'm not mistaken, at least previously, we take the yard waste, we pay, I think it's like 2 or $3 a yard to get it ground, and then a contractor buys the yard waste from us. And so it, other than us putting it in a pile and babysitting it for that time, it's almost a cost neutral Deal. What, what do we? What do we? Where do we sell the yard waste for now, Donald? It was. It was like three to grind, three to sell. But that market is has completely dried up, and we're just right now with the amount of waste that we have, we are just we're just having it ground and removed at this point. So are, then, are we? We haven't we haven't composted in over a year. Okay, so are we? Uh, how are we? We finding the people to come take it. We have, a, we have a contract that we put out for an RFP for grinding and hauling or bringing the material there to their site, like Butler or other, other um, Denali, things like that. There's, another, there's one other company that, that bid as well. So, And they're not paying no longer for it? We're paying them to, to grind it up and haul it away and get it out of the transfer station site. Then some of it, even for the leaves? Because there's, I, I'm sure there's places that would take the leaves for nothing from us. Uh, we, we, we've been bringing them to Collins this year. After we grind them or before? Before. So we're not paying to grind leaves. So all we're paying for is brush right at this Currently, point. Currently, the, the thing, again, the, the, our direction has changed a little bit. So right now we're going to Collins and we are grinding our yard waste up with Butler. All right. So. Councilman Jean, you still the floor? No, good. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, Deputy Mayor Suzak, then Councilor Ongar. I, I did think we left the flat rate in there, didn't we? Because they, they pointed out that with a flat rate, if you have, you know, you have to pay for the first 100 pounds no matter what. So, it used to be $7, it should be $10. 
if we're going to charge $10. So we don't have a flat rate in there. Well, I, I guess what really, what is the difference? We have a flat fee. So you go in there and you have two pounds, you pay, you know, 20 cents. We I can, mean, we can only, our, our scales only are for the first 200 pounds. And, and measure the 20 pound increments, giving the residents the benefit of the doubt. Right. If you commit a 15 pounds, it's going to show up at zero. Okay. Right. So maybe so, we should just add something there. Yeah, so. we need to put some sort of flat rate back in there for that people. We really need to encourage people, though, to take, take and just put a bucket aside and throw all your metal in there. Because bringing that metal in and throwing it in, I mean, what do you do it? Every couple of months, just swing through the transfer station. It could be two or 300 pounds. You know, you're removing that from the trash and you're putting it into the metal recycle, which right now we're, <laughs> for the residents is free. Councilor Ungar? Um, back to my other question about the $5 to the $20. Did, was there any consideration going to 10 or 15? That's been, that was uh, talked about at length. I don't know if any one of the counselors can. Again, if, you know, for, for the service you're getting, we, we, well, 20 is reasonable for, I mean, some people go quite a bit. You know, I mean, $20 is not a lot of money to be able to get rid of your waste. I mean, you always have the option to go down to the place and pay $150. You know, we, we got, what happened is, is we, we have to make some money at the dump to try to help offset some of the costs. So the problem was, is we were, we were getting stuff at a loss. So if you're getting at a loss, you only get, you only dig yourself deeper. If we're making a little bit, every little bit helps reduce the overall cost of the, 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 the dump will never run in the black. So, I mean, you guys could put whatever you want. We could let people in for free. But if, you, if the idea is, is not to tax the people that don't use the service, you make a price for people that use the service. And then if I never go to the dump, I don't have to pay anything. So that's that's part of the reason is to try to offset the tax dollars. Perhaps so uh, everyone don't as have as we pay. did a um, comparison of other towns for water parks. Perhaps Don, I know I've asked him in the past. He has a month. He should look to see what the average and what other communities are doing. I know several that charge one hundred and fifty dollars. Right, it's, it's significant. One hundred and fifty dollars. Right. Yeah. And when we say that we we're not trying to make money or break even at the transfer station, why? Right. Why are we not trying to do that? So I think other you should look at it. But I, other towns charge for brown barrels, too. We don't. I'm telling you, I've looked at this. I haven't gotten in, in, is in depth, but we are very, very, very reasonable. And we are way below on a lot of the permits. I'm not advocating, you know, going crazy, hog wild, but $5, it costs us more to print the permit. But that's what I'm saying. The 20 I think, was more than Well, fair. but I, I'd still like a comparison so you know and the residents will know what other communities for the exact same right. apples Agreed. to apples are charging because it is exorbitant compared to $20. All right. I, I agree, and thank you for that, because I have residents that ask me. And this way they can watch the meeting, right. and then they can hear your answers. For the whole right, thank you. Uh, so we will table this till uh, next. Cheryl's got a question. I'm oh, sorry. Council Riley. Yep. So um, I do have to agree with um, Tim the Scale guy over there. I've seen him a couple of times this past couple of weeks. Um, we should probably wait to change the fee, though. Absolutely. At you know the first of the year, don't do it like mid-year because that's going to cause when, a lot of problems when, down there. When does the uh, the permits? I can get them as early as you want. I generally start filling the next year's permit mid-November. So that's when. So that's good. By the time we get done and get this thing through, it'll be about that time anyway. So the 2022 permit right. will be at 20. Yeah. Or whatever. Anything else, Donald, from you? No, just along with the implementation schedule, we still need some education and get some things out to folks. So, again, it's all just a decision on council. If right. we want to start everything for fresh on January 1, um, then so be it. Fair, or, right? or, again, but that, that that's something that, we're, that I don't think we really discussed about uh, in subcommittee was how fast we you want to do this. But I, for, the, um, for the barrels, I need at least a couple months to get all those out and get you know right. tags ordered and get everybody out there and get them tagged and whatever. So I need several months for that. Um, the bulky waste part of it, it can go in effect relatively quickly because it right. really isn't much 
infrastructure I have to do, we, you know, we have to do other than education. So, so do I have a motion to table for the next meeting? Motion Deputy Mayor Suzak, Suzak second. seconded by Councilor Spraza. All those in favor by show of hands. Opposed, abstention, 10 in favor, zero against. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you hanging in there. Mm -hmm. And welcome back, too. Yeah. Moving to item M, uh, resolution increasing the ROV, election workers rate of pay per hour. Really Be it resolved in the courts of chapter five, yeah. section 14 of the town charter, the rates of pay for the following election workers will be increased. Will, incre will be increased to the following. Checkers, ballot clerks, tabular tenders, and demonstrate demonstrators, $14 per hour, effective 7, September 7, 2021. Be it further resolved in the courts of chapter five, section 14 of the town charter, the rates of pay for the following election workers will be increased to the following. Moderators, $19 per hour, effective September 7, 2021. Assistant register moderator, $16 per hour, effective 7, September 7, 2021. Head moderator, $22 per hour, effective 7, September 7, 2021. Councillor Muller. Second. By Councillor Mangini. We do this every year. This was included in our budget, so it is already funded. And as you know, the state minimum wage has increased, so they're doing what they statutorily are required to do, and we already funded it. Yep. I think pretty straightforward. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sapraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungra Four. Ungeyer. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. Ten in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item O, discussion resolution, authorizing Tom Mayor to sign a memorandum of agreement with North Thompson Fire Department. Whereas the Enfield Police Department has initiated phase three of the Enfield Joint Operations Center program, whereas one camera as a part of this phase is to be placed in the North Thompson Fire Department, 439 Enfield Street, in order to provide camera coverage for the immediately surrounding area and the intersection, and whereas the North Thompson Fire Department has requested a memorandum of understanding in order to memorize, memorize the terms of the camera placement and or as the memorandum of understanding has been reviewed by the town attorney's office. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Enfield Town Council authorized the town manager or his designee to sign the memorandum of understanding on behalf of the town of Enfield, submitted on July 12, 2021, by Chief Ehrlich Fox, Enfield Police Department. Second. By Councillor Mangini, second by Councillor Muller. This is pursuant, this is a, a third phase of the Joint Operations Center of um, deploying cameras around town. Um, and again, the council previously approved the in the budget the cost of the cameras. This will be done at the North Thompsonville station. And they wanted a memo of understanding for the camera to be placed there, and it's been reviewed and approved by the town, man, uh, town attorney's office. Similar to what we kind of did with Enfield Housing Authority. Right. Yes. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Riley? Four. Councillor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Uh, Councillor Bosco is absent for the vote. Councillor Sakala? Four. That's nine in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item P, discussion resolution, resolution referring to the proposed redevelopment of land located at 117 Post Office Road to the Planning and Zoning Commission, whereas the town of Enfield, also known as the town, owns a property located at 117 Post Office Road, Stowe Early Learning Center, whereas the town, in conjunction with Enfield Public Schools, plans to put two modular classrooms on a property, whereas the Enfield Town Council must refer the proposed improvements to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8 20 now, therefore, be it resolved that the proposed improvements listed above are referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in accordance with the requirements of the Connecticut General Statute, Connecticut General Statute 8-24, prepared by the Town Manager's Office on July 22, 2021. So moved. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Riley. We're a victim of our own success. Uh, the Stowe Early Learning Center is so phenomenally successful. We have uh, critical space needs that we need to address. It is, again, another collaborative effort with the superintendent and the Board of Ed. We're trying to be proactive. Um, we are actively discussing modular classrooms there. It's a complicated issue with sewage and electrical, but we want to be in a position where the superintendent is anxious to try to do it for the opening in, in uh, the fall. So we want to get a leg up. We'll get approval from planning and zoning, and we're still working on the details of the funding and the actual uh, installation. But again, uh, again, kudos to staff being proactive, not waiting until September, have the plan ready, and then, you know, be rushing and trying to get it approved. So um, we're hoping 
that we can come up with a good uh, plan to expand space at, at, at that facility for the cr incredible program that we provide our residents. Thank you, sir. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please, Sheila. Councillor Hemler? Four. Mayor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Muller? Four. Councillor Riley? Four. Councillor Safraza? Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. Ten in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item Q, discussion resolution, resolution amending the Enfield Town Council and the Enfield Board of Education use of schools and town facilities policy. Whereas in its desire that where is desire the Enfield Town Council have a comprehensive facility policy for all town and board of education owned and controlled facilities to ensure proper usage and compensation of said facilities. And whereas the DPW subcommittee has met to amend the facility use policy to make several recommended changes. Now therefore be resolved the Enfield Town Council does hereby adopt the facility use policy in accordance with the attached revisions revisions submitted by the town manager on office on June 17, 2021. Okay. Councilor Muller? Second. By Councilor Deputy Mayor Suzak. Uh, Councilor Sferraza. On page nine under associated costs, it has um, for uniform police officer 6212. 6212, unless they change it, is uh, top pay of senior patrol officer, and that changes every year. So is it the expectation that every year when they get their raise and that rate goes up, we're going to go back and open this up and change it? So because we were changing it at this point, I did reach out to Public Works uh, Police uh, to update these figures. I don't think historically um, in the past they've been updated each year. This was just the most recent rate, which is okay. why it's It's just that if we charge 62.12 within two years, the officers are making 68. We're actually not, we're losing money on it. So I don't know if language could be, you know, like prevailing extra job rate. I don't know how you'd word it unless you want to. It's going to change, is all I'm saying. Thank you. We appreciate that. So that'll be up uh, to the DPW subcommittee if you want to revisit it, the language, or revisit this uh, when there are changes uh, every two years or so, or every contract. Yep, good point. Any other questions? Councilor Sakala? I mean, so has everybody read through this whole thing? So. Uh, I guess one of my questions is, did we do this as a result of some of the stuff that was happening with soccer? Or, I mean, it was this specifically indoor? I know it has indoor and outdoor. It has athletic fields. But I guess one of my questions is on page three, when you say, when we talk about order of priority, um, some are town events or activities and then versus school events or activities and then all other organizations are under D, I guess. Um, what are you considering a town organization versus an all other organization? Where would the soccer club versus the soccer association fall? Um, are they equal? Where would Little League, which is not a recreation, it's not under recreation because it's not town, but it's a town, um, where would those fall? So we did add on the first page uh, the definition for town, uh, and uh, that includes the town council, town boards, commissions, agencies, departments, and divisions. Um, so that, for example, referring back to page uh, three, that would be like, um, it's broken out between school facilities and town facilities. So school facilities, uh, the school events or activities take precedence, while in town facilities, uh, town events or, or activities take precedence. So for example, the uh, recreation department uh, would fall under that or any town council events, anything like that. Um, all other organizations um, are inclusive of nonprofits, which is where any uh, soccer association, Little League, would fall under all other organizations. And there's more. Um, language regarding uh, all other organizations starting in line 96 specifically how those facilities are assigned at that point right and they go by roster size and, and things like that because you're going to have things like an all other organization which would be let's say Enfield Soccer Club and then you would have another other organization that would be like a premier travel that has 
Enfield girls or boys on it as well. So um, I would have liked, and I guess this has been my gripe for, this has nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Um, this has nothing to do with this specifically, but my gripe has always been getting a lot of this in one meeting with three days to go over everything is a lot. So the solid waste, the bulky waste, and then I'm supposed to read seven, 12 pages of this in a weekend. Um, it's a little ridiculous in my opinion, but that has been my gripe for what, eight years and hasn't changed. Um, again, if everybody is good with this, that's fine. Um, I will tell you I'm not prepared to vote on this tonight, but that's just because I think there's a lot of new language in here that I didn't even know this was going to be on the agenda before Friday. So I don't know if all nine of you guys have read all nine pages of this and are okay with all of the changes um, and have talked it out, that's fine. Um, I will abstain from my vote. Anyone else? Councilor Bosco. This is another one that I think it's been three years we've been working on. So, uh, I, you know, we, I, I believe the uh, urgency on this one was, if I'm not mistaken, the, they have to start taking the rosters for the, uh, all the teams. And as it stands right now, you know, the, the one soccer club could get everything and the other one don't get nothing. So, you know, this was all to, to more or less get everything all um, straightened out. I mean, we, we did three big ordinances all in a short period of time, even though these all three of them are three years old. So, um, I mean, wherever, you know, if no one feels comfortable on it, that's fine. You know, we could postpone it, but the problem's going to be is it's going to screw up staff for trying to allocate the fields for all the other sports that are coming in. Yeah, line um, line uh, 107. Uh, so this adds deadlines for when uh, each sport, uh, for, I guess for each sports season, when rosters have to be submitted by an August 15th is the deadline uh, proposed here for uh, the fall sports. So I, I can tell you registration's not even closed by then on some of these sports. So that's not going to work. Just heads up. Any other comments, questions? Deputy Mayor Suzak? Hey, Gina, you did get the one we just read, which were the changes, because this, this is something, this is a policy we've been charging and we've been doing everything. Yep, and I it's have like one that's- really a clarification and to be a little more firm with what we're doing. Yep, it's blue, red, strikeouts, yeah. Correct. Yep. Okay, just I just wanted to make sure because we've gotten a lot of paperwork and I don't know. I'm comfortable with it. Roll call, please, Sheila. Councilor Hamler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Muller. Four. Councilor Riley. Four. Councilor Safraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Against. That's nine in favor, one against, no abstentions. Thank you, Sheila. Item 16, public communications. I'd like to speak for the council. I know it's late, but I just got word. Yep, welcome. Walter Cruzel, 21 Charger Road. To that uh, call at 115. They do make an app for scanners now, so whoever's complaining they're not getting information, just tell them to download the app for scanner. And the second point, <laughs> Councilor Ryan the head Councilor Suzette said that they didn't fall asleep till four o'clock. Well, at three o'clock on Channel 16, there's a new meeting that comes out. It puts you to sleep at two. Minutes. <laughs> Thank you. you to I, I'm going to remember that, board. Walter. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else like speak for the council? Anyone else like speak for the council? Declare public communications closed. Any councilor communications? 
Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Right, Councillor Spraza, seconded by Councillor Ungar. All those in favor? Let ten in favor, zero against. Good night, everyone. Have a great end of the summer, and we'll see everyone in September. Thank you. Thank you.